So I'm Rachel Baxter. I am a wife and mother. I've got four kiddos, ages 12 to 17. That's my primary job, um, but I'm an industrial engineer, manufacturing background, business efficiency consultant, MBA. Um, so got some, got a, got some good uh, work background and all that kind of stuff, um, helping provide for my family. Um, but about 10 years ago, I went through an inner healing ministry and became spirit-filled and began hearing the Lord's voice, that still small voice, and having dreams, visit, visions, and angelic vis visitations. Wow, so, that's cool. That was oh, that switched my life around a bit. So I've been adjusting to <laughs> this new normal in the Lord for the last ten years. So very, very fun, and um, looking forward to sharing some of what God's shown me. That is fantastic. I've never actually heard the audible voice, uh, but you have heard the audible voice. Yes, but rarely. Mostly, mostly, mostly. It's just the still small. Hey, that's. That's still awesome. And, you know, there's, we've had heard reports of people that do hear that audible voice. And that is just, that's an amazing gift from Christ. Absolutely. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It's, um, you know, understanding that we are a spirit in a body with a mind, right? And our spirit is eternal. And being able to connect with our spirit and his spirit, who he made us to be from the foundations of the earth, right? That's, that's yeah. the true, true nature and our eternal souls with him. So. Yeah. Ah. You know, I've been studying the topic of that spirit connection as well. And from what I understand, the more you have that closer intimacy with Christ, the more that you just make him the center point of your life and focus on that intimate relationship, the more that the supernatural spiritual side will manifest, if I understand things correctly. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think we were meant to have just a deep personal relationship. I think if you think about why did the Lord create us to begin with, it was all about He wanted to have relationship with us. And so that only happens out of intimacy, right? Yeah. Spending time with Him and... And being able, I think he made a way through Jesus, right? That we're able to go through Jesus and we're able to um, connect in with God's heart. And because we are, we are a spirit, um, learning to see with our spiritual eyes, even relying on those more than we rely on our physical eyes. And I think there's yeah. coming a time that will be really important. And a, a lot of the things that I've, re, uh, I've read and listened to on a lot of these spirit-filled NDEs is that their connection with Christ is faith-based, where some people have to have like visual proof or, or scientific-based proof that can hinder your spiritual ability to see that supernatural, supernatural realm, whereas the ones that focus on that intimate relationship and just go you know, head first deep with just faith and connecting with him will have those supernatural experiences. So it's, uh, mm. it's really, it's really fascinating. It's for me, it's just fast. I've never had, uh, heard the audible voice, but it doesn't mean that it won't happen. It's absolutely. Uh, uh, I, I feel left out. <laughs> I've never had any of that. And I've had, uh, you know, uh, uh, Yeshua is the center of my life since I was a very young child. Uh, you know, I've I've believed in the creator of the heavens and the earth, uh, but I don't hear voices. I don't talk to angels. Uh, I don't even have dreams. Uh, I had one vision when I was in college that was specifically for me and not to be told to anybody else, but that was it. And it was exactly like one of those things. It's like, I don't know if I was awake or asleep. All I know is I was getting instructions uh, and that was it. Uh, as far as supernatural, that's the closest thing I've ever had. But uh, it's funny, I used to say that God talks to me all the time. And my wife asked me once, what do you mean by that? And um, what I would mean is when I would be studying something, and I'd have those aha moments of like something clicking, and I just knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that something was true, I would attribute that to God. Because my entire life, I've been so used to attributing things to the Creator, both good and the bad. 
uh, that that's it's not supernatural to me. It's real. It's reality to me. So I've never I don't see the I I never really experience things like you know supernaturally to where like I see demons. Uh, you know, you know, behind people, like some people will see like demons and that's their indication yeah. that they're possessed. And I'm like, I don't see that. I see the, I see the results. I see the effects of them, but I don't see like those visual supernatural things. You well, you might count yourself lucky. <laughs> Watchful, you have had a supernatural uh, occasion when that, um, that healing of that eyeball that one time. Yeah, but I don't consider that supernatural other than it's uh, ex other. Well, I guess you could say that's supernatural, but I have seen somebody's eye heal uh, right in front of me. Um, when I was in high school, we were doing a play. They had these uh, hangers hanging down and somebody in the play got shish kebobbed. Uh, and I took her and her sister up to a room and prayed for her. And we pulled the thing out and I prayed for her and her eye healed and she kept her vision. and had, She went to the doctor and they there couldn't even go. tell anything had happened. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty supernatural. Yeah, that's watchful. the Lord. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just consider that, you know, life. That's just like she was healed right, right in front of me. But like when I think supernatural, I think like I don't see like spirits or angels or I mean, I've been hit by a car two times where physically I should have been squished like a bug and I got up and walked away. So I guess that's supernatural, too. So I guess that is you're right. Totally supernatural. There has been a couple of things that are supernatural. If you want to go by supernatural, I was just yeah. uh I guess my, my, what I was trying to express is, uh, um, I don't know, more, uh, ethereal, maybe <laughs> that would be a better explanation. Yeah. So, you know, I, here's, here's kind of how I think about it is that, you know, we were all born, right. And God did us together and knew us. And somehow, um, for me, I, I vibrate at a certain frequency, and so we're all sound, right? God spoke the universe, the one verse into existence, and the word, Jesus was with them at, at creation. So Jesus, Holy Spirit, God, we're all, you know, together. And so he created us. We vib we're all meant for a purpose. And then I, I, this is the way I vibrate, my sound that I vibrate at, that allows me to see in the spirit. And mm -hmm. that's how I think about it. Like, so, because I do have an engineering mind, so I'm, I'm always like, well, this is really cool, Lord, but how does this work? Like, why? Uh, what's the purpose? Because God does everything according to a purpose, right? He, it's, I know that he likes to have fun, but mostly he's, he has a system and structures for why things are the way they are. So for you, you know, he created you specifically. And here you have, obviously, this inquisitive mind to understand what's happening you know, and be able to work things out. And so we're just different. And yeah, it's okay to, to desire the whatever, the greater gifts. But I mean, all the gifts, God's no respecter of persons, right? And each of us just have a role to play. And Absolutely. just because you haven't yet seen anything, apart from a miracle in front of your eyes, which is incredible, um, you know, that doesn't mean that you won't in the years ahead. So I... You know, I believe that. I believe we're all we're all meant because we are spirits. We're all meant to be able to to operate on that spiritual level. But I will say, here's here's my caveat: is that I grew up in the church. I was a Lutheran, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, which um, very strong in the Word, and I'm really really thankful for that. Uh, but I I believed and felt this far away God. You know, the Lord was this this being way out here, and I never felt close to Him. And then when I went through this inner healing ministry and I literally through the laying on of hands received Holy spirit. And then I be, that's when the switch went off for me and I began hearing God's voice because you know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And that's a real thing. So, um, I what year was that? Hear the voice. Um, early 2014. So it's been literally 10 years. Okay. Yeah. So for 10 years, being able to see in the spirit and, um, yeah, I knew, you know, what that looks like is that we're in a realm. So we'll do a little, little bit of teaching if that's okay. So we're in, when I was talking to, um, Kip earlier today, that's her name, right? Did I get that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I was, she was I said, well, maybe at some point we'll, we'll have you back on and we can actually do a teaching on, um, on kind of some of the spiritual things on like seeing in the spirit. And, and so, but I'll just give really briefly, like at one time, the Lord talked to me about, showed me and spent time kind of over months, periods of time, like being able to 
hone my, my sight to be able to see into the different realms. So we're in an earthly realm, right? And God's in another realm. Right. And they're all the, 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 you know, Satan and the angels and all of that, they operate in different realms. And we know from the demonic that they're, they're not physical, but yet we see them, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's just realms and being able to see in those realms. And then again, it's for a purpose. So when I see things, I'm like, Lord, what are you showing me and why? And, um, you know, to share it when I feel like I have understanding. And I'll, most of the time I don't share it because people don't all, um, have a paradigm, you know, for it. And God will prepare their heart when they're ready, right, yeah. to see. So um, for years, though, it was very much the Lord allowed demonic to come and um, bother me. <laughs> so I, that, I had that. I had to, like, you know, hug me and bother me and I, I would I, like mostly at night when I was sleeping, I would wake and there'd be something standing over my bed, like right here. Wow. And mm. I just was like, Lord, you know, search my heart and, and teach me. And it was interesting. There was one particular thing that didn't want to leave because normally it's just, you know, you, okay, Lord, like there's nothing good in me apart from you and Jesus in me. Right. And it's like, leave in Jesus thing. And um, that normally does the trick. Um, but again, this was a number of years back One, So the Lord said to me, he said, Jude three. So I'm, I'm kind of like, there's this thing. And I, I'm like, I don't want it here. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do. And Jesus go and go, you know, I'm like, go in Jesus name. And it didn't leave. So I, I was like, well, and then the Lord said Jude three. So I had my Bible behind, beside my bed and I grabbed it and I'm like, Dah! and in Jude three, there's scripture that says the Lord rebuke you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I said, and that worked. So, hmm. you know, the same thing doesn't work. So there's just principles. That's a silly, kind of a silly story, but there's principles that work in the spiritual realm. And again, Satan, my, I'm a, a, a young earth person. I believe in a 6,000 year, you know, it's been 6,000 years almost, and there's a 1,000 yeah. year reign of Jesus. So that means Satan's had 6,000 years to study us, and I'm going to be 47 in a week. So... I'm a baby, you know, and so we need the Lord to teach us. And his, his word is the primary way that he does that. Right. Yeah. And even in that example, he sent me back to his word to get the answer for what to do, to do, to deal with the demonic that I was seeing. So you're, you're saying all the right things. I mean, it, it, everything that I've studied, everything that I've studied and a lot of uh, I just, uh, I've had an obsession of studying all this stuff and, you know, sometimes we'll have guests and stuff doesn't line up from research, but everything that you're saying just is exactly uh, what I've researched, which is awesome. Okay, well, praise God. And yeah, I am yeah. just a person, and I am fallible, so I do want to say that. Like, I'm not the Lord. I'm, I love Him, and I submit my life unto Him. He is my Lord and Savior and everything, but I'm fallible, so take everything that I would say to the Lord for yourself. Absolutely. Of course. Uh, discernment is key, um, though I, I like to give folks words of encouragement when I feel like they're right on track, um, because sometimes folks are not, but it's, I, I feel like what you're delivering is something that is well needed, because this is something that a lot of folks don't have a lot of experience in, and it's something that fascinates me, too, because I don't fully understand the spiritual realm like that. I've I'm learning because I study a lot of NDEs, uh, but for you, you you actually operate uh, with that gift, so it's totally different from someone that studies it versus someone that actually deals with it personally. So it's awesome. I mean, I, I feel like hopefully I have some insight to offer in certain things. You know, I will say that. So I'm I, since you brought that up, um, I was listening to one of you guys' programs in the last, uh, I don't know, few days. And I'm not sure when this one was from, but you were talking about, and I think watchful, it was you, you were talking about John in Patmos and, mm. you know, receiving the revelation. And, um, one of the things you kind of had said was in the scripture, it talks about, it says the Lord said to go up, um, mm -hmm. and something like that. And you were, you know, you were kind of analyzing whether it was, you know, was it North and then this Northern star concept and, and that kind of thing. So I thought that was interesting, but I will tell you from my personal experience. So 
one of the things I'll talk about tonight is the, these angelic, two angelic encounters. And after the second one, I actually had an experience where the Lord said to me, and this was, he didn't, it wasn't an audible voice, but it was a very clear, like, Holy Spirit is speaking. And he said to me, he said, come up. And when I closed my eyes, I literally, my spirit left my body and went up into the heavens. My body was still in bed, but but my awareness went up into this place. And so I felt like when I read that from John, that was what, what it was nothing he was seeing on the earth. He literally had been brought into another realm where he was able to see outside of time, this thing happening, right? Yes. Because that's, that's what's happened for me a number of times, you know, seeing things that there it's not, we're not on a timeline. Like he was blinded, if I understand, so he had to be seen in the spirit. Right, right. so we, which, we which is kind of a gift, yeah, because he was, like, if you if your eyes are closed and, you know, there's something playing out that you know it's not your imagination, that's, that's uh, you know, that's like, thank you, Lord, for doing that, right? That's like, to me, as a closed vision. Watchful, what were you going to say? Yeah. Yeah, we don't actually know for sure if he was blinded. It's a guess. Um, it's an assumption, but you, you'll hear it both different ways from historians. Some will say that Patmos was a blind island. Some will say that he was there and he um, still had his vision. So it's it's really just a it's an unknown thing that it's a, it's a nice to know. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. But what you were saying made sense, though. Hmm. Yeah, that's really neat. So yeah, you must have watched our Seven Seals video or one of the uh, one of the segments that we cut out from the Seven Seals video because one of the things that I had speculated, and I found this when I was playing around in Stellarium, after I'd figured out after I'd <laughs> again it was one of those things that I say that God showed me, but really I was watching a video, and somebody was showing the um, uh, Aurora Borealis, and it just absolutely made sense that that is absolutely what he was talking about. So that's what I mean when I say God showed me something. Uh -huh. uh, Great. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I I try to be very clear in what I'm saying. Something that I've that um it, it's so easy to miscommunicate things. Um here's an example. Uh we've been talking about adding study groups to our uh our website. So and there's three of us that are at least three of us that are interested in doing study groups. We all three of us are literally talking about them in completely different ways. <laughs> We're yeah. just using the yeah. same word study group. So for Dr. Greener, a study group is for him to flip on the camera and start teaching and have people interact with him like in the chat. Um, Christopher is wanting to like have an email that people can send uh, a message to saying, hey, I'd like to join up and do some kind of a study group. And then we could organize it like yada, yada, yada. My version of it is a Facebook group where we have a leader. So anyway, we all have these completely different <laughs> ideas for how <laughs> to study groups, but we're using the same word. Uh, so it's funny because... Uh, I have to be so I have I'm I'm finding in my old age that I have to ask people okay what do you mean when you say study group <laughs> just like my wife would ask what do you mean when you say God showed you something are you hearing voices are you talking to angels was this an aha moment so anyway I think that's pretty funny but yeah so it must have been our our, our seven seals video because when I was watch when I watched that video about the aurora borealis and I had that epiphany um, is probably a good way of uh, describing it also. Um, that's what led me to work in the uh, installarium to where I realized that there's there's four constellations that match the descriptions in Revelation 4, uh, which led me to looking for events, which led down the whole path of, of that whole series. That I don't know if you watched the whole thing or if you just caught a couple of them. I didn't get to see all of it yet, but it's really, really no, good. It's and fun. I love your graphics, by the way. I love it. I think oh, thanks. a great job with your graphics. And I really I want to ramp that. those up like 10, 10 degrees more. I would love to find somebody that is capable of doing 3D animations that could like animate those parts to like being taken up into heaven and seeing the image. Yes. That would be so cool. FYI, anybody in the chat? Anybody in the chat? I was like, good luck. If you're in the chat and do, and do motion or uh, after effects, please come see us. Um, that would be that's, awesome. That's something that uh, was never in my tool house. You know, I'm good with many things when it comes to editing and video production, but uh, animation, design, motion, and uh, After Effects, that's a very specific skill set. So if that's you, please reach out to us.
anyways, didn't mean to cut you guys off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so did you, so, I mean, we're kind of talking about those spiritual things, so, um, and talking about Stellarium, uh, did you guys want me to jump in and share yeah. my screen, or is that yeah. Okay? yeah, we'll just do All the, right, we'll so, just do the news, and ten, so normally the way we do this is we do news first. Uh, tonight we were going to do continue uh, a segment on the Ten Commandments. Why don't we just move that all that stuff to the end and just yeah. get right into your presentation? Yeah. yeah, I'm excited to hear what you have to say. So um, there, the, there's nothing in the news that's extremely pressing, but we'll communicate that later. I'd rather hear what you have to say. Why? Why is it important to look at the stars and the signs in the heavens, right? And oh. Um, because a lot of people are like, well, isn't that astrology? Isn't that really of the enemy? Don't we want to avoid that? And so I really just wanted to pretty quickly kind of zip through what the Lord showed me, like why it's so important. And I'll tell you, when I say that too, um, watch, watchful, um, you know, the Lord showed me like, or he led my heart, like it's really just those impressions. That is, well. unless it's. God spoke to me and said this. I will say that sometimes. Uh, there's times where the Lord has said, Rachel, I want you to write exactly what I have to say, and I'll write it down and say, this is what I heard from the Lord. But otherwise, it's just a lot of, you know, the impressions and being led to and him showing, like, I feel like he's showing me the importance of X, Y, Z. So I'm with you on that. Yeah. Uh, some folks don't understand the difference between astrology and astronomy. And uh, Watchful has really brought this up a lot because we feel that the signs are in the stars and in the heavens. And it's a very, it's very, he's very specific about us looking at the heavens. So for folks that, that think that looking up to the heavens for stars and signs is, you know, part of pagan beliefs, I, I 100% disagree with that. Are you seeing my screen? Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Okay, so I'll zip then. All right, so, you know, we I'm sure you guys show this scripture a lot. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from night. We all get that, the sun and the moon, and the sun comes up, but let them be for signs. And then it also is for seasons, for days, and for years. And so that kind of goes into his calendar, which is really vital. So I'm going to just set the stage for you. What what am I talking about? What do I believe? Like, what do, what do I see happening? And so that you guys can be able to kind of decide for yourself. Is this something that I, that you feel like the Lord is going to draw you into to deeper or do you just kind of take my word for it? Or do you say, no, like, I don't, I don't think that's true. So um, the lights in the heavens, he's talking about the sun, the moon and the planets. And I want to mention also other lights because there's been times that we know um, specifically the time before Jesus was born, that there was a sign in the heavens. And so, but that sign was a fleeting sign. It didn't stay. It wasn't, it didn't continue on. And so that could be moment, you know, movement of planets, but it could also be something else. So things right now like that, for example, would be on October 9th, there was the longest, longest 10 minute gamma ray burst in history. The brightest light that was ever seen on the planet, apart from the sun, came out of the constellation of Sagittarius, which means the arrow, interestingly enough. And so that was, that's a sign. It's something that happened. And, and Lord, what are you doing in that? So I'll, I'll maybe reference that again. Right now, there's a pretty amazing sign happening in the heavens. And it's in the location between Taurus and Gemini in Orion. And it's Betelgeuse, a supernova. And uh, the newest, um, you guys might have to help me because I don't have this in front of me. But the the um, Hubble, the replacement of the Hubble telescope was the Webb. Is that right? Did I say that James right? Webb, yep. James Webb. And so it's showing right now, like what I just read a, a, a um, headline that said, you know, we can, we no longer believe that what we're seeing in the heavens happened millions of years ago is happening right now. So I think because of what the Webb is showing us. And so that's pretty amazing right there. Just the assumptions that um, astronomers have made for all these years and the reality that the light that we're seeing is happening right now at this time. So this light, this, this Betelgeuse, it dimmed, and now it's, it's pulsating, is what is the Lord saying? He's talking. And then also just kind of pointing out there's also things like asteroids, right? So Apophis that is upon us um, in 29 mm -hmm. and then again in 36. So those would be considered signs in the heavens. So, you know, that gamma ray burst, like what, what I felt like the Lord showed me was that it mattered where it came out of. Um, you know, the Lord had had me studying 
the Maseroth. So there is the um, the Hebrew word for the the twelve constellations, right? So not the zodiac that would be kind of more under the astrology, but the Maseroth is the Hebrew word, and so the constellations. You know, I'll, I'll go into this a little bit more, but God named those, and so out of Sagitta, it is the only place in the Bible that you see this this arrow, this word. You know, there's, it's very limited. And one of them is in Zechariah 9. Then the Lord will appeal, appear over them and his arrow will go forth like lightning. And the Lord God will blow the trumpet and march in the storm winds of the south. So it's like the Lord will appear over them. So I believe and feel like this was a really important sign that happened in the heavens. It's pointing to, hey, hey, friends <laughs> on, the, on the planet Earth, you guys are living in really exciting times. So, oh, I did have this included. So here's Beetle, Beetlejuice and Orion, the supernova spectacle. Um, pretty incredible. And then Apophis, right? So we're watching this this as the timing of Apophis passes. If people don't know, this is this huge asteroid that was found. Um, right now, the governments of the Earth are saying, no, there's no way this could ever hit Earth. Don't worry about it. Maybe more likely in 2036. So uh, we have to say, Lord, what about what do you say about this? So, but it's it's a sign in the heavens. So that's kind of zipping through that. And so the other, you know, what we can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to, um, yeah, so I don't want to like disrupt your train of thought. Uh, one thing that we're trying to do though is, is have pauses, uh, when doing these presentations because we really like the conversation. Our viewers really like the conversation. Oh, yeah, I can't see you guys right uh, now either. I'm just on my screen, so it's helpful. Please interrupt me anytime. Yeah, quick uh, question for you though. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 you're fine. Uh, um, so, so when you say the, um, that word arrow is the only place that's used in Zechariah, uh, what do you mean by that? Because I'm pretty sure that there's over 50 uses of the word arrow. Um, um yeah. Is it in, in a certain context that you're referring to? Yeah, let me look deeper in it. So I use the, the blue letter Bible. That's where I go, hmm. right? And you've got the Strong's Concordance and then you have the Hebrew I have this ginormous deck, so I apologize. I'm kind of scrolling to find where I, because I, I just pulled that one slide out. Because I've been mm. kind of sharing this information on my own website for the last couple of years. Um, boom. So his arrow occurs one time here. Oh, so is it the phrase yeah. his arrow? Because yeah, arrow it's, is, it's, is, is haste, which I think yeah, it's used this, over 50 this, times. Yeah, thank you. Well, thanks for checking, right? That's, I'm good. <laughs> you know, that's okay. Um, I just so want to be this, clear because because we expect people to fact check us. Uh, and and no, I, I, want, I just wanted to make sure if you're saying, are you saying arrow or his arrow? So, it's, so yeah, I would they, say his, it's, it's his arrow from Zechariah 9.14. And again, if I use the Blue Letter Bible and I would like click on that, that's what comes up. It says this is only one time in one verse. It's the only time that it's okay. in Zechariah. And so for me, that that lights me up because the Lord's had me studying Zechariah for a long time. Um, mm. Again, kind of full disclosure, where God had me for seven years, I was Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Zechariah, and that's probably it. I'm probably forgetting a book or two, but like I just lived there. Mm. <laughs> that's like my whole life was that living in those books. Um, for a purpose, and I'll explain what that purpose was. But so when the Lord showed me this was Zechariah, I was like, I knew how important it was. He was highlighting to me, like, this matters. This is really important. Mm. And so, but then if, when you look in that verse and you read it, right, there's also then a tie, this as the lightning. Then that led me on a little rabbit trail to go to, well, where is as the lightning? And that's only shown up three times. It's in Zechariah, but surprisingly or not, in Matthew 24 and Luke 17. Again, it's right. an end times look, right? For has the lightning coming out out of the east, and that it's that east, you know, that's where we're looking is to the east. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man. So that was what the Lord kind of did for my heart was like, hey, this is really important. I'm showing you an arrow, and also because I had been studying the Book of Revelation then the in the last couple of years deeply, um, and looking at the timing of the uh, and the sequence of events and those kinds of things. So. All right. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome question. I appreciate you asking. Okay. So, please feel free to jump in. Okay. So, 
so again, just kind of our assumptions for so folks would know. So there's eight planets, right? Poor little Pluto fell off the map, but uh, Earth plus seven others. <laughs> Poor Pluto. <Yeah. laughs> and so here's a picture, and you know, again, so I, when I didn't really, I didn't remember this from elementary or middle school or whatever. Um, the way that the planets all orbit the sun, and and again, people might jump up and go, oh, "Okay, it's flat Earth," and that's not true, and that. But it's still true that we see them in a certain pattern. Okay, so even if you don't, we don't. That if you're if you're showing a picture of the planets, we don't see that. Well, there's no visual. Oh. If you're if you're showing an image of the planets, oh. we don't see it. Yeah. Okay. So for some reason, my little. Um, there you go. Okay. Maybe I'll just. Yeah, leave we're it looking. On this view. Yeah, we're looking I, at. I uh, if you have multiple, mo you have multiple monitors. I don't because I'm at second. We see it now. Room. We see it. Okay. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder if when you shared, you shared a specific window. Like if you have a slideshow. Um, oh. Me, I think you're sharing your browser okay. window, or no, this uh, whatever you're using for your slideshow here. Yeah, it's just PowerPoint. So are you seeing the one that oh, okay. says the planets in our solar system not to scale? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Oh, great. Okay, so it could just be a lag too. Okie dokie. So, for folks to know that every planet has its own orbit. And so, mm -hmm. that's why we see Mercury and Venus a lot more often. They're zipping around the sun fast. Then you've got us, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. So, because they all have their own orbital period, you can picture that if you spun, started to spin, you know, eight different tops at different rates, how how impossible it would be for those to all line up at a certain point. Or if there was a dot on each one that you would see each of the dots line up. Um, and so here's what I believe, is that God created this perfect, amazing, incredible system that works according to his perfect timing. And everything is right where it's supposed to be. And there is nothing left to chance. And everything is communicating to us. We just You're don't know what right. it is. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. So praise the Lord. So then, in addition, in this whole system you set up that we're trying to figure out and understand again, because I do believe there was a time where these, this stuff was understood. The ancient paths were understood. Yes. People walked. That oral tradition piece that was passed along, there was a knowing and an understanding. And we just have lost it in our society. And where I went um, a couple of years back, a few years ago now, there was just a couple of books the Lord brought me to. One was called Maseroth, and then the other was The Witness of the Stars by E.W. Bollinger. Yes. And those mm -hmm. were like, you know, 1800s pivotal to helping me like make sense of this stuff. So highly encourage people to do that. So then you can look at and say, well, then in addition to the planets, there's these constellations, these groupings of stars. And we know that God, the Bible says that God names the stars. He calls them mm -hmm. all by name. He named them. And what right. blew me away on my journey and maybe you guys too, it sounds like you're in the know, is that, <laughs> that across all cultures and across all time, the constellations are grouped the same and they're named the same, almost without fault. There's been a couple of um, gerrymandering, <laughs> I'll call it, um, changes yeah. um, that man has done more recently, but it's incredible. Like you go back to the Chinese records and the names of the stars are, they're grouped and named the same. So only the Lord, only God in heaven can do that. He's so incredible. So, so, the, kind of, so what's interesting is the more and more I research this stuff, the, the more clear and evident that the early church did the best they could to hide this knowledge and change the previous history and documentation. They did the best yeah. they could for folks to not be able to make all these connections. Um, I've, I've been studying. It makes sense. It makes sense that all the star names and constellations have stayed the same because people don't realize that most every single culture invests massive amounts into the stars. We even see that today with our investment into telescopes and, you know, NASA and, you know, all this, all this stuff that, that goes back through history. Even the Egyptians, you know, if you think of the Sphinx, it literally tells you how to, where to start and stop in the uh, Masaro. Well, I mean, the Catholic Amazing. Church has a, a massive telescope called Lucifer. Um, yep. Right. So, but they they right. did the best they could to 
discouraged this information and even came up with doctrine to lead folks in a different direction. I mean, just look at the, what they taught us in school about uh, evolution and apes growing up into men. And, you know, and they, they've said, Hey, the earth has been here for 7 billion years or some ridiculous number like that. But there's evidence all over the planet of ancient civilizations from that early time period that had this advanced technology from the fallen angels and they mm-hmm. knew exactly what they were looking at. Yeah. Right. Oh, incredible. Yeah. I mean, one example of that that I learned was that there's a constellation called Coma. And it mm-hmm. really, it's, it's a virgin with, a, it's a, a mother and child. And it's believed, and I was reading this in The Witness of the Stars, it, that that's actually where the sign of um, the Bethlehem star was that that is the constellation it was found in and Mm -hmm. that there's some speculation that we will again see that star reappear in the timing of the man child, right? In revelation 12 and the 144,000 coming forth and all that. So I just think that's pretty incredible. They renamed it wig. Like it means wig, like some Bernice's wig or something like that. I have a question. I have a question for you, Rachel. Maybe you'll know the answer to this. Um, a lot of the NDEs that I've been watching, they, when they go to heaven, they travel through space to heaven. And, and I've heard this more than once that heaven is a star that is visible in our night sky. It just looks like a star. I don't know. That's amazing. Yeah. uh, But it's not just one or two. There's been, Six or seven different NDEs, and again, these folks don't know each other. They, they it's just the small details of their stories line up, like when they lift out of their body, like how you explained when you had your vision. You know, their spirit went up, and they right. traveled. They traveled at what felt like light speed, like what you would right. see in like a Star Wars movie with all the you know, yeah. the stars flying by. But every one of them said that they ended up in heaven. And it started as like a small dot that looked like a star, and eventually they arrived. But every one of their visions or NDEs, when they left their body and went up, it was heading towards just uh, one of the many, many millions of stars in the sky. Is that what they mean when they say like they're going through a tunnel and they see the light at the end of the tunnel? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Huh. That's, that's, that's exactly that what before. that's exactly what it is, and it, I, I didn't come to this realization until recently, but they were literally that tunnel is like, you know, the Star Wars warp speed. They're traveling so fast that oh, the light, wow. you know, Ooh. the stars are moving past them, it, so it turns into a tunnel, and huh. then they then they arrive at heaven. And I just thought it was fascinating right. that we could yeah. be looking at heaven every night. It's in our night sky. We just don't know it. Yeah. Wow. How incredible is that? So, yeah. Um, so I, I was like asking the Lord if I should share this. I feel like I can. So I have not shared this with anybody, but people really, really close to me. So a number of years ago, I think it was in 2016. Um, you know, a, a lot of what, uh, when I experience supernatural things, a lot of times it's the middle of the night. It's that either midnight or three o'clock and I'm awoken from a dream or, or I'm in a dream, dreaming of dreaming of dreaming. You know, I'm like deep, deep, deep. And um, in this experience, though, there's times where it is just a dream. There's just dreams, and wow, that was significant or interesting. And, or maybe it wasn't. It was just a dumb dream. Um, and then there's times where it's way more than a dream. It feels more real than me talking to you right now. So this was one of those. It was all of a sudden I was in this so middle of the night. All of a sudden I'm standing in my kitchen. And I'm facing a certain direction in my house towards outside and a hand comes and rests on my shoulder. And all I see is the hand and feel the hand. And then all of a sudden I shoot up through our house, very real. (laughs) And I had Hmm. thought to myself, why am I not hitting something? Um, We shoot up through the, you know, the main level and the, it was a two story house through the roof. And up, and I'm going so fast, and my eyes are open, and I'm thinking to myself, 
how can I keep my eyes open? Like I've been in an airplane or, you know, I've, I've flown yeah. in an airplane and, and I, you're in the you know, spirit. The wind, like, right. And so I'm like, I was, but my mind was like, I don't understand. I could, I was trying to figure it out. And was all your sudden, vision, was your vision 360 degrees? Like you could see everything around you? That's a really good question. Nope. Uh, was, just curious. Cause I, I was, yeah, I was just really in my body. So I would be just like this. So okay. I was, so what, who it was, was Jesus. Okay. So Jesus, the only, so I've had a few encounters with Jesus, Jesus, it was his hand, but again, I only saw it like this, but then I felt him. He grabbed me and then we shot up. We went up, 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 up into the heavens, like into this, into space. I'll call it just like, if you were in a space shuttle, that's what it seemed like. We stopped on a dime. Like we shot up, we were there. We stopped. I looked down at the earth and it looks like, so this is when people ask me, um, oh, or, or, you know, want to talk about the flat earth thing and all that. I say, here's all I can tell you is my experience. When I looked down at our earth, it looked like what it does from the pictures that we see from space, supposedly. And so it looked like a, a cylinder. And then I looked at our planet and I looked around and, and I knew that I saw other planets and other stars. And then we shot back down like we were coming back to Earth, but we didn't. Instead, we landed and we were, Jesus and I sat in this stream of water that was maybe 12 inches deep. And there were other people around me and there were um, like fish swimming, like you would expect, but there was a shark. So a shark swam up, just a small one, like maybe, you know, two feet or something. Jim, and, and I was fearful. My finger, my hand was out, and I was, like, going to pull back from the shark because my nature was like, oh, no, this shark is at, you know, is at enmity with me. And so, but then Jesus, he held my hand, and the shark just came up and touched it and didn't do me any, any harm. And it was the most peaceful, um, a beautiful, like, I can't even, I can't, there aren't words for the beauty that I experienced um, the stillness, the peace, the, the colors, all of it. And, and then that ended and I woke in my bed, I woke up and I was like, what just happened? Oh my gosh. And I'm processing and I fall back asleep in the morning. And I literally forgot about it till later in the day. And then when it hit me that that had happened, I realized that right before bed, I had prayed a little girl prayer. <laughs> and when the Lord, when the Lord answers, I, I hope this is everyone's experience, but because this is how good God is. If I, you know, we can pray lots of crazy prayers and compl complicated prayers or prayers out of our mind. But this prayer was, Lord, I just need to see you. And I need to need to see the way you see things. And so that was my prayer before I went to sleep. And I realized how he chose to answer that prayer. He lit because I was crying out of desperation. It was a really hard time. I realized that he allowed me to see him and he allowed me to see the way he sees things. And the way he sees things was what he, what he took and he showed me his view from, from where he is in the heavens and the way he sees the earth. He doesn't see the earth right now as undone, as broken and as such a mess and a wreck the way we do. He sees the earth from the finished work that he did on the cross where he knows that where all this is leading is the restoration of all things, the new earth yeah. and the new Jerusalem. And that is what he showed me. So when I went back into the planet, that's where he took me. It was a restored to creation, to the intention of creation before sin is what I got to experience wow. that really brief encounter. So praise the Lord. I didn't expect to share that. But since you were talking about how people went up, you know, that's, I did. I experienced that, but it wasn't that's, your death. I was. That's fascinating. You know, I've I've heard I've heard other folks say exactly what you have said. That there has been uh -huh. other people that have been shown your description matches several of other ones okay. that I've studied. It's it's really incredible. Praise and Praise and, the and the and the way they explain it is the way Jesus sees it is the timeline for him is not linear. He can see the start, the beginning, no. the end, the middle, everything. And right. it's it's really incredible just to hear someone else like yourself explain stuff that I've heard several times and what my discernment has told me that is is legit. 
and being truthful. Right. Well, praise the Lord. Praise yeah, the Lord. Well, I it's have not really studied, awesome. so I don't know, but I'm glad to hear that. So thank you. I appreciate yeah. the encouragement, for sure. Christopher has two addictions. One of them is to Bibles, and the other one is to watching NDE videos. He's probably the most most well-read <laughs> person on NDEs on the planet. <laughs> well, he's excited to get to do that. but You know, you know that's exactly that? it. It's it, you know, when you really understand what is after our physical life, you literally do not fear death. You're excited. Yes. I am excited to be with him and, and to be with everybody up there to see my my loved ones that have passed and for just I'm just excited and it's there's not a, a single doubt in my mind what happens after we pass it is just it's so incredible it doesn't matter if someone's had a near-death experience or an out-of-body experience or if they've dreamed the ones that are real their their details are so consistent so consistent that it's it, it's impossible to be otherwise i heard i have heard some fake ones and it's I don't know how I pick up on it really easily, but there are people out there claiming stuff that's not legit. But the ones that are, and there are a lot of good ones that are legit, your guys' details all make so much sense. And it's really interesting to hear you talk about this. I'm good. Good deal. All right. So I'll continue on just, uh, again, kind of setting the stage and then we're, we're, uh, this is good. This is whatever the Lord wants it to be. So I appreciate you guys' patience with me. So, um, my, my understanding is that Israel is God's timepiece. So it is in the region of the cradle of civilization between the Euphrates river and the Nile river where, where I believe all humanity began, um, the garden of Eden. Um, and so when I am on Stellarium watchful, um, I use, Jerusalem, Israel. I, that's where I, mm -hmm. I always go. Um, and then I look east because we know that the sun and the moon rise from the east and we know that Jesus will return from the east. So that's like if you think about a clock and the center of the clock and the hands on the clock, like to me, you know, Israel is that that um, I don't know what the right analogy would be. It's the, the long hand or the short hand or the I don't know. Um, the dial of the clock. Anyways, I have to think about that, but that's the, that is the timepiece that I look for. So, okay. So we've already kind of talked about some of this. So August 21st, 2017. So you guys, I know we're not going to go deep into this because you guys have had other programs and other people talking about, you know, this, the significance. We can all agree that we've got all the time in the world, Rachel. I'm, I'm in no oh. rush. <laughs> okay. No, seriously. So Okay, I don't well, think Watchful or I have anything to do. We're, we're excited to hear what you have to say. Okay. So, um, but I just don't want to belabor. Like, so when we, in August 21st, 2017, you know, leading up to that, it was a big deal. It, in, in, I was really studying and, and watching to see what the Lord was going to do in that. And I was, I went to a place, we were in Nebraska. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. So we didn't have to go very far to experience that solar eclipse. So, I was a part of a little a missional Christian school at the time. And we went to this little town with a little church. It was, you know, a hundred people and, in the town. And so it was just incredible to watch this, watch the sun and the moon do what they did. And the, the darkness that came, the silence that came, God was speaking. And so he's so um, full of grace that he's given us almost seven years. And so I, you know, I feel like most people knew in their hearts, like, this is a warning. We've got to get our, you know, stuff together. And so here we are. Um, now it's been almost seven years. So um, I, also that year, I had had multiple in, deep impressions, the Lord speaking to me, and then a, a very specific dream around September 23rd. So the, I believe with my whole heart, we saw the fulfillment of Revelation 12, 1 and 2. And I've got a little picture of that. Um, for folks, again, in, in case you don't know what that looks like. So this is from Stellarium. You know, this was the woman, Virgo, with the sun over her shoulder, the moon below her feet, 12 lights over her head, the nine stars from Leo, the planets Mercury, Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, the king planet in her womb. And so we saw the fulfillment. So ever since then, you know, we're obviously, we're looking for the fulfillment of the verses that come after that about the red dragon. And, and I do not believe that that's happened yet. So... 
um, yeah, I can just tell you multiple times I have had, I've woken up with this look, with this picture in my, my mind, like this, the picture of the solar eclipse and what we're going to see here on April 8th. And the picture I have here, I know there's other pictures that show this more as an Aleph, right? The Aleph and the Tav. And, and I believe Kip's spoken about that a bit with you guys. So um, the Nineveh, all the, you know, the Salem and the Nineveh, and there's so much that uh, we can't deny that this is important and that God is speaking. So I want to go in tonight, you know, some people say, well, who cares about America? America's not even in the Bible, <laughs> you know, and I want to disagree. So I want to share with you what God's been showing to showing me the last 10 years about, well, why would the Lord choose to do this over America? And if Israel's his timepiece, why wouldn't he be doing it over Israel? You know, like, why isn't it, isn't these, this particular solar a series of solar eclipses over Israel? So I want to talk about that a little bit. So we'll get there. So what I want to say is God's, God moves according to his calendar, not ours. Uh, and, and I don't know, again, I've, I, there's people that have studied his calendar way longer than me, but I can tell you the conclusion I've drawn as of today is the, the current, uh, Jewish calendar is not, is, is an error. I'm not even sure it's completely biblical. <laughs> it's not. And, <laughs> yeah, we. I gave up on trying to fight, figure out whose calendar was right because there's like ten people out there that have like evidence and convincing stories. So I'm just like, gee, it's hard. I guess uh, I know it is. It's so hard. <laughs> I gave I up. That's Marx. why. I, I, yeah, but Marx is right. just the Hebrew calendar. And there's people who yeah. make convincing arguments for why they're yeah. off, whether it's 30 days, a year, three years, 10 years. It's just okay. like everybody's got a different story. It's so hard to right. keep track of that right. stuff. Fair That's enough. why I started yeah. paying attention to the eclipses and events, because those yes. are irrefutable and everybody can say, oh, yeah, that happened. Yeah, that's really, really good. And I'm with you. Um, but I, I know that his calendar matters. And I we know that Jesus perfectly fulfilled to the moment, to the instant. Mm -hmm. Right. We know that he filled, fulfilled the spring feast. And so we know that he's going to fulfill the fall feast. And that's why I, my heart wants to beat with his calendar. So in my searching, there was a number of years back. I knew that I knew that I knew I landed on. I knew that Jesus had to have been, been crucified uh, on a, you know, on a Wednesday afternoon. I knew it. It had to be, there was no other way with the timing of the the um, the Sabbath and the morrow after the Sabbath and, and all that. And so mm -hmm. he's crucified on a Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. You know, he comes out of the grave actually on Saturday afternoon around 3 p.m. That's when he came out of the grave. That's my belief. And so, and then, you know, you have the Sunday morning is when they found the tomb and, and all that. So when, when I came across the Essenes calendar, I'll say it like that. I had read, so we've got the Bible. Then we have like the Septuagint, right? We've got, you know, the book of Enoch. And we have these other books, so I don't hold them in the same regard. But I think that God, there's, God's the restorer of all things. So in the same way that the church has hidden this wisdom, like I just have wanted to get my hands on everything I can that is that has come from the Lord. Or like Enoch, you know, here is a person who walked with the Lord and he was no more. That is my heart's cry. I want, <laughs> I know, I'm certain I won't attain it on this side of Jesus because, um, First of all, Enoch had hundreds and hundreds of years to give his life over. But but I love Enoch because literally the picture I have of Enoch is he lived his life so that he walked with the Lord until the place that his his physical existence no longer ma mattered and his entire existence moved into the plane where God was, the heavenly the heavenly realm. That's how I picture it. My like, favorite book. You know, ah, praise the Lord. My, so my favorite anyway, book. So, is it the book of Enoch? Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Okay. So you guys um, probably have heard of, you know, you know, Tom Horn, the late Tom yes. Horn. Yes. Yes. Away recently. And I felt led to read these couple books. Um, so when the, so when the Dead Sea Scrolls, when all that was, was happening and I, you know, I had, it actually happened, what, I don't know, six years ago. So I've been to Qumran in Israel a couple of times. Praise God. Really? Got to tour, got to see some of the original. Um, I'm no expert. I'll tell you that, but it is a special place. And God did something in desi desiring that we would be restored to this, this ancient understanding. 
So you've got the Essenes and in the scroll. So Tom wrote about this and spoke about this. And then also Josh Peck. There's another book that I read. I can't remember who it's by, but it's called this Copper Scroll Project. So there's actually a scroll found that is made of copper. So it's very well preserved. Anyway, they both these guys, Josh Peck and Tom, talk about the Essenes calendar. And so when I read this, like my spirit left. I was like, oh my gosh, this explains so much. So this all matters. I'm getting to why all this matters. So how do we know we're at the time of the end? And how do we know the signs in the heavens are for us right now? And again, if God set everything in motion perfectly, we can look to the to stars in the, the sky and say, what is going on and what is it communicating? If we understand what each of you know what what each of the the planets means and if we know what the star constellations mean and all of that. So this was pretty incredible. So I, if you've, if you've never heard this concept before, <clears throat> so two things, one is first that the conclusion that both of these guys came to in, in reading and studying the Essenes writings from Qumran is that there, there was the seven. So there was a seven, 1000 year periods, right? And there were really three, 2000 year periods and then one, 1000 year period. So I, I put it this way. The understanding is that as Jesus lived and died on the earth during the last Jubilee before the sixth 1000 year period as a transition time, so it will be in the age we are living in where there is a time of transition so that his kingdom can be established. So what am I saying here? So what they both of these guys said was that in 2025, we, according to the Essenes calendar, but in our putting it in Greg, the Gregorian calendar, um, connotation, right? But according to the Essenes calendar, God's calendar. So in 2025, according to the Gregorian calendar, it would correspond with the start of the last Jubilee. What's a Jubilee? It's a 50-year period. The book of Enoch talks all about all of the 50-year periods that led up to a certain time. Might have been Moses. No, I don't know. That wouldn't be great. But anyway, I don't remember. He kind of laid it out. I think it was Moses was the one that recorded Enoch's book, right? And that's why I'm thinking of it like that. But anyway, so mm. the last was it week, Moses or so Noah? What I, I, I don't think they were alive at the same time. No, no, well, no. Well, yeah, no, but we know, you know, we know Enoch did not write that book of Enoch, but right. I can't remember if it was, I think I talked about it being Noah at some point. I don't know if it's Noah, Noah or Moses. Well, remember, the, the book of Enoch, was, the book of Enoch was a, was a, culmination of a lot of writings that they put together from my understanding and okay. in, the, in the early church it was the go-to book it was the main book that people resourced in the early church wow. it was originally in the bible well, and even it, jesus yeah, yeah it we, was we know that most, even jesus had access to it it was the you most popular it, right? most popular book in the bible All right, so so we'll set that aside. But so the fifth year periods of time. So the scrolls to to just be super simple about it. What it basically the um, conclusion was that in 2025 of the Gregorian calendar, we would start the last fifth year period of this thousand years. Okay, so so some people think, oh my goodness, we must be. I thought and this is me. I thought. Oh, we're coming to the end of the la the six thousand year period. Like maybe if Jesus came in twenty in 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 twenty eight, right? If that's the year, or if it was thirty two, or whatever. But if let's say mm. it was twenty eight, then it was like, oh well, it's two thousand twenty eight. We're coming to the end of the the this the six thousand years, and great, he's coming. That's what I thought. I really thought that you know made sense. But when I read this, I was like, okay, this is super interesting. So the conclusion here, according to the Essenes calendar, is that basically you have your, your jubilees and that jesus came at the very start of the final jubilee not at the end of it so if 2025 is the start of the last one then could we expect jesus to do the same thing and and jesus just so everybody knows like this is what jesus says he's like the kingdom's coming the kingdom will come but not by observation you won't say look over there and see it or look over there it's going to come within you he's building his temple in us so his kingdom will come within us. That's really what we're looking for, in my opinion. And so this place of Jesus coming within his people, um, Jesus, the hope of glory, um, and that actually happening in the years here ahead, because if Jesus came, let's just say in 28 to 32, could, 
could that same kind of thing potentially happen where he comes in 2028 to 2032, you know, and his people in the form of the Great Tribulation? So that's kind of that's kind of that. So I'll go one more level deep and just say that the Essenes calendar lays out a super simple calendar. And uh, I I'm like, this is brilliant. <laughs> if this is the right one, Lord, is this the right one? So I don't know. This is where I'm at today. And it's basically that the the new year, God's new year, would start on the first Wednesday after the vernal equinox. So the vernal equinox is something that can be observed with a trained eye, right? The the equinox is when you have the same amount of day as night. And mm -hmm. the for it to always happen on a Wednesday, that's because of how God did creation. The first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. This is how he did it. Um, and so that's why it would always start on a Wednesday. And so I said to you, when I had studied this, I, my spirit left because I was like, I, when it actually lined up that, that, that Passover and the timing of Jesus, that the, the, um, yeah, I'm just thinking about this now, that, that the, the way that this would come to pass, the timing of, of things. So Anyway, you can look at the calendar here and kind of see. So here's here's what I'm going to share later is that in 2024, that Passover, according to the scene, go ahead. Can you, are you able to actually zoom in on that? Because the writing is oh, so small, it just looks like a black <laughs> line. Right. Let's do that. Thanks for asking. Let me. So let me see if it'll let me, um, if you can actually see it zoomed in now. Do you see it or not? No, I can't see it zoomed in. I think we're looking at your like. Your okay. uh, so for some reason, it doesn't want to. Yeah, where your see. mouse is right now, that's what we see. Is that any better? Um, eh. oh. I where, where, I'm so to maybe just describe it. So, so what? Just point to what you're what you're referring to and describe the dates. Okay. So what? Where on here are you oh, saying is it's it's right, pointing out what right, you're referring right. to? So in in 2024, right here, ah, okay. the vernal equinox is on March 20 at 5:06 a.m. So that would mean that the first day of the new year would actually be on Wednesday, March 27. Therefore, Passover would fall on. And so again, this is I put this together. So if my my calendar could be wrong, okay, but this was just mm -hmm. you know if if I understood the calendar right, this is I dropped it into Excel and then said, okay, so if it starts on a Wednesday, then Passover would actually be on the ninth on April 9th, okay. And so the exciting thing about that and for me was that that date April 9th was like, gosh, what's going on on April 9th? Well. Actually, hours before that will be the solar eclipse in the United States of America, right? Hours before. And because Israel's in 2024, ahead of us, right? They will, in 2024, yeah, which is the year that we're in. So, mm -hmm. so the Essenes calendar, so basically just high level, starts on a Wednesday. It's 90 days. And then there's a day that is a, a break day. It's kind of weird, but they call it something. And it's a very, it's for a specific per, per, uh, reason. 90 days, a day of uh, uh, like uh, an added day, 90 days, an added day, 90 days, an added day. And so right. that lays out the calendar of it. And kind of the amazing thing is the way that it actually is synchronized. It is a true 364 day mm -hmm. calendar. If you end early, you just wait for Wednesday. So, right. Man, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm just introducing this concept to folks in case you've never heard of it. It's kind of interesting. And so, um, so as we look at Stellarium East, then, so on, so here I am, this is the program Stellarium, the screenshot, and this is at three, at three o'clock on April 8th, okay, boop, so you can see the planets, the way that they are lined up in the heavens, so I think you've had someone else on that's talked about this, is that true, just the, the lineup of the planets? I've talked about it before. Uh, I have another channel, I Am Watchful, where I've gone into extreme detail because they, they've been parading in lines for the last two years because um, they're all like conglomerating in that side of the sky. They've been doing that for a while now. Uh, I yeah, think yeah, Mark yeah. Biltz might more. have talked about it. Okay. So, so I, you know, so first just seeing this and recognizing, wow, okay, so we've got all the planets in the same one-fourth of the sky the same quadrants mm -hmm. of the sky. 
And they, they happen to fall within three constellations, Pisces and well, right. So right now that's showing. So by the, by the time, and I'll, I'll, um, as you go ahead into June, it actually squishes up a little bit more, but kind of from here, Aquarius to Pisces to Aries to Jupiter. So this, I, you know, I just really spent a lot of time staring at this, like, gosh, Lord, what are you doing in this? So Jerusalem looking East, and this is the same timing as what's, as the solar eclipse over our country. So, so here's where I want to jump into, um, what happened to me in a really good way. So um, I just took a screenshot. So I've, I've shared this. I think, I think I released this pretty early. So when the Lord started talking to me in 2014, he would say things like this. <clears throat> he would say, Rachel, write what I have to say to the nations. <laughs> and I would say, Lord, I, I, it's just me. I'm just here in my prayer closet. <laughs> you know, who are you talking to? And, um, but I'd be like, okay, Lord. So I would write it in my little journal or I would type it or whatever. And, um, then there came a time and I think it was around end of 2015, maybe even in 2016 where the Lord was like, okay, Rachel, I, I want you to start sharing this. I'm serious. Like I, you know, there, there's a, a place and maybe you guys have dealt with this. Maybe you haven't, but I was a professional and, you know, a reputation and, my husband was like, what are you talking about? Um, and so there had, to, there was a place where like my, I had to die, right? Die to self, die to fear of man, um, all of that. And just say, okay, well, Lord, I trust you. Yep. I, people are either going to just kind of like Jesus, either he was Jesus and I'm not Jesus, but you know, or, or he was crazy. And so it's like, well, this either happened or I'm crazy. So I, I don't think I'm crazy. I've been functioning at a pretty high level, uh, all these years. Um, professionally and all, and as a parent and all that kind of stuff. Um, so people will have to draw their own conclusions. But so for whatever reason, the Lord chose to to share some things with me, and I know I'm not alone. There's lots of voices, at us, you know, sharing. I agree. Things and things. I agree. So yeah, and I'm thankful for that. <laughs> um, so it's not on my shoulders; it's on His. And so this is His message. So here's what happened: is um, Actually, um, back in May of 2015, I'll back up just a little. And the, this is this is um, the, the audible voice of God. Okay, so this is what you were, Christopher. What you were what you were saying before was so precious. So the Lord woke me up, and I heard His voice, and He said uh, something crazy that I'll say to you guys. And um, <laughs> He said, "It is time. It is time to lead." It is time to lead your brothers, Manasseh, to me. And in 2015, I did not know who Manasseh was. I was like, I don't know who that is, Lord. Okay. I mean, I, so, you know, you're like, oh, I probably read that. You know, like, what is that? Right. What's the reference to that? There's lots of biblical names and whatever. So that put me on a, on a, a seven-year journey to learn who Manasseh was. And I wrote a book, and I'll share it here in a second. Um, the book's called The Revelation of Israel, God's Plan is Our Destiny. Uh, because what I learned in that is that um, the United States of America, I, uh, I 100% believe without doubt that we are the fulfillment of the promises that God made to Joseph's son Manasseh. So when people say, no, America's not in the Bible, I'm like, mm, it is. I see it. You know? Mystery and, Babylon. And, you know, we, well, and we can also see it there, right? Um, because there was what God intended and then there's what's, what the enemy <coughs> has done, right? To pollute and take, take all of that. So... Um, all right. So that was 2015. And then in December, so a number of months later, um, I had an encounter and this was more like in my prayer closet, but this was the Lord said to me, he said, he referred to himself this way, which he's only done this like three times total in my relationship with him in 10 years. He said, the spirit of the living God comes to you. The spirit of the living God comes to you. And he said, an event will occur that will begin world war three without debate. The underpinnings of this attack come not from afar, but from your shores. Do not be deceived. And then he said a, a lot of stuff. Um, I did share this years ago on True News. Um, and But he said, look to Miami, look to San Francisco, and look to Chicago. So hmm. this was back in 2015. Okay, so I'm sharing that because this will tie into what I'm about to share with you now. So on this particular day, on January 3rd of 2016, middle of the night, I'm in my bed. My husband's next to me sleeping. 
where he always is, and he never wakes up. He never sees anything. As crazy <laughs> things are happening around me, as, I, as I'm getting drug out of my bed or whatever, um, he's he's oblivious. So that's amazing. He gets good rest. But um, so what happened was, I opened my eyes and I was I could see with my physical eyes wide awake this angel standing in the corner of my room, <clears throat> and he was. You know, we filled the space. I'll say it like that. And that we had vaulted ceilings. So, you know, tall, tall, large, dark hooded figure. Um, so right away, right? Like not the first time I'd seen seen things like this. So I, I, you know, you're checking like, wh- who, what is this? Lord, I'm always, my dialogue is, Lord, what's going on? Like, what is this? I felt the peace of the Lord. So I knew that this was from him. This was not demonic. It wasn't the enemy. None of it. There was... This was from the Lord. It just was, this was an angel. So that obviously is scary. Um, so I heard in the spirit, so not the audible voice. I just heard in the spirit, see. And I saw an open vision in front of me of twirling figures and they were dancing. And I had the sense that it was a different time. It wasn't right now. It was a different time. And, and now after the Lord spoke, I knew what time it was. So they had sacks on their back, like provision. They were adorned, jewelry, fancy clothes, you know, beautiful hair. And I was made to understand that they were joyful in the Lord for having listened and prepared. Then I heard the voice speak. Um, this might have been more like Holy Spirit. So <clears throat> I have heard different. There's the Lord God. There's Jesus. They're, they're really, those three persons of the Lord are, do really sound different. So I heard... I am raising up the Josephs. The date the famine begins is January 16. So didn't say what year. Again, chose to speak in the Gregorian calendar, right? January 16th is not God's calendar language, but that's that's my my language. So that's how he spoke to me. I literally fell back asleep. I know that sounds crazy, but I just fell back asleep. Um, I woke again, or I was like awakened, like awakened. And I saw in the cor- other corner of my room, opposite of where the angel was, I saw a pile of mechanical bows, but there were no arrows in them. And I noticed that. That was important. I went back asleep again. I was awoken again. And I saw the tall figure. And he said, um, tell them what is coming. So tell them what is coming. And so again, I am just Rachel. I'm telling you, but I'm telling whoever wants to listen, um, tell them what is coming. So I'm telling. So that um, experience, right? So that experience happened. Um, I also saw after that, I saw um, thinking about how I, I feel like this was even with my eyes closed. So I saw a picture of. Uh, what looked like an expanse of pup tents, like small tents, no big deal, like military tents, no markings or anything. Just I just knew they were small tents. And I saw a large castle, like a beautiful, amazing castle with the you know stone walls and all of that. And the sense that I had was that the tents were exposed and vulnerable. And this majestic castle was like an invitation to protection for what is coming. Um, the Lord then spoke to me and I wrote this down. Um, this was just would have been a still small voice. He, the Lord said, write what I have to say to the nations. It is I that raises up kings and nations. It is I that causes them to fall. And then he talked to me about war. So I knew that. And I have that, that prophetic word on um, my blog post. Called I've, heard, I've heard other people talk about their dreams regarding the tents you're describing. Really? Yes. And and the castle. It, that's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I really felt like the castle, you know, it's the Lord. It's his protection. It's And that's where he wants his people to be. And I feel like I want to pause. There's, there's more I can share here, but I want to pause and say, what's the purpose of this? Um, it's God loves us. He loves his people. 
And he wants every person to know how much they're loved and that he has a plan. And he has a plan to protect us and provide for us through what is coming. Now, we know from Scripture that only a remnant is going to make it through. So, but the the from from Scripture, from the Bible, we also know there's groups of people. We know we don't want to be in the unbelieving group, right? Because they're going to face judgment. They're going to die in their sins without being reconciled to the Lord, and they're going to go to hell. That's what I believe. The Bible is very clear on that to me. Now, the group of people will be martyred. Though what I what I believe, what I read from Scripture, if you're martyred, you get to come back and live with Jesus on the earth for the thousand years. So praise the Lord. Not a bad thing to be. Not a bad um, category to be in. And then you've got the people that make it through. And that people that make it through are the remnant, the remnant believers. And it's a small group of people, but it's from they're from all the earth, including the nation of America, where I believe primarily Manasseh is, but other others of the tribes as well. And so we're going to make it through. And we're going to be protected for protected and provided for during the tribulation and great tribulation that is ahead of us. So why is why would the Lord speak of this? First of all, to prepare our hearts and that we would when it happens, not that it would be like, wow, that I heard some girl, Rachel, talking about this, you know, like, well, that's amazing. No, it's like so that people would believe because God is the God who wrote the end from the beginning. None of this is a surprise to him. He has a plan for all of it if we'll seek him. And again, I already said, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So if we'll hear him and we'll follow him, we'll be protected and provided for through all that's coming. So why would he share this with me? Why would And why would this angel come and say, tell them what's coming? Because he wants us to be ready in our hearts. The first first thing is intimacy with him, that we follow him and that we go where he leads and that uh, what works for one person, just because one person's prepping and the, the Lord's told them potentially, hey, I want you to store up this and this, and I want you to move here. If the Lord told them to do that, they should do it. If the Lord didn't tell them, then that could still be an error. That could still be flesh. If the Lord didn't tell me and I go do what, what they're doing, then that doesn't mean I'm protected or provided for. I need to, each of us that he loves and called by name and knows every hair on our heads, we need to be doing exactly what he would say for us to do and for our families to do. Right. I think you're spot so, on, Rachel. That's the purpose. Yeah. I, I everything that you're saying, uh, I have heard this message in a similar format from other folks who have had prophetic uh, dreams and visions. This isn't the first time. So someone in the chat said to, you know, to take what you're saying with a grain of salt, uh, I disagree. You know, you you always want to fact check yourself through prayer and and reading and and research. But everybody knows I'll be the very first person to step in and say, "Yeah, I'm not feeling it." But um, I think you're spot on, Rachel. Okay. Well, yeah, well, and we've talked that. about and- this. We've we've talked about this uh, almost every single episode. Because uh, we're all looking for April, we're all looking at this eclipse on April eighth because we have certain expectations based on our own research and and you know interviews that we've talked about, and uh, uh, specifically even with Ben from Suspicious Observers. So we're, we're seeing the signs not only in the heavens but on the earth and as well as um, uh, the history of the earth. Uh, I don't know if you know who Ben is from Suspicious Observers. But I do. He's, he's I love Ben. Very, <laughs> I love yeah, ben. he's very vocal watch. about the coming catastrophe with the earth flipping and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, so it's like there's so many things that are lining up in the timeline. Uh, what you're saying, you know, obviously there's war coming. And, you know, we can see that with with the the way that the po- politics are marshalling. Uh, and, and, you know, we just don't know the exact exact dates. We're all like gathering information and evaluating this stuff. So it's, it's not like she's saying like peace is coming and everything's going to be hunky dory. Well, it's like, (laughs) that would be more contrary to what we're seeing because, you know, we see the war with Russia and Ukraine. We see the war, you know, ramping up with China and Taiwan. Uh, You know, we see all of these things. Uh, So, I mean, this, this tracks. So, I mean, if you, take it with a grain of salt it's kind of an insult because there's a lot of evidence here um you know there's there's a lot of data and a lot of evidence so 
you know, it's it, it's a little bit more than just salt, more like a bucket of salt. <laughs> for me, right. for for me, it it has nothing to do with data or information. Uh, it's the one thing that I feel that Christ has gifted me is discernment, and I just know what I know, and it, it's as simple as that for me. Uh, you believe it or you don't believe it, that's fine. But I, I'm going to voice my opinion. But I, I think you're spot on, Rachel. Yeah. Well, thank you. So that's faith. You know, what you're talking about is faith. And listen, I my heart is not to date set. So when the Lord said this to me, I didn't want to share this with anybody. Like, and, and why January 16, Lord? And so here, this has been seven and eight years ago. Okay. So that's a long time. There, The world looked different seven and eight years ago than it does right now. So, I, I mean, but I, I shared it. I'm like, okay, it's all right, Lord, I'm going to share it. And I, you know, I don't know that I understand the January 16th date yet, but I trust him. So, so what happened was um, in amongst this time period, I was having different dreams and visions about war coming to America, about, um, uh, you know, America losing our place in, in the world about our society falling and all kinds of stuff. So God was preparing my heart in that way too, for kind of what we've seen happen. And so, um, so this angel, the same angel, which I'll call the angel of death. I don't know. My, my impression was that this was the same angel that his job was to do was Passover. So like, that's his job. Um, but he's from the Lord. So he came back a year later, um, a year and four days later. So on January 7th, 2017. So the same angel returned. I believe that was a confirmation. And he started by saying, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. You have been called to see that which is coming upon the earth. So he's standing there in the corner of the room, same place. And I have another open vision. In the open vision, I saw what looked like a spotlight shining in front of me. I saw two coins coming together down from above to rest between the, so sorry, I'll say that again. I saw two coins coming together, one from the left and one from the right. I then saw the shape of a V coming down from above to rest between the two coins, which both had faces on them and they were facing each other. I understood the V was a reference to the symbol on our currency upside down and that this was tied to economics. Hmm. So the angel sounds in 2016. Like the, it sounds like the constellation Pisces, the way you describe it. It sounds like the coin that I've seen uh, with King Charles on it. There were faces. Yeah. Hmm. So the angel in 2016, if you recall, referenced famine and war, right? I'm raising up the Josephs, which meant like God was saying the Josephs, the Josephs job was to deliver the people, right? Uh, I, uh, Israel's, so Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, Jacob was Israel, Israel had 12 sons, Joseph was one of them. So he, so basically, Joseph was responsible for saving Israel and his 11 brothers, right? So God was saying to us, listen, I'm raising up the Josephs. Yeah, there's a famine coming, but guess what? I've already prepared. I've got these people ready to take care of my people. So that's what God had spoken in 2016. So it, here at this experience, um, the Lord was, in addition to famine and war, this this experience started out being about our economics, okay? So I was then, this is when when I was actually taken up. So then when the Lord said, come up, and I went up and into an encounter where I went into a temple and was shown a young lion with his head, like the side of his head. And then as he turned his head, he became an eagle. The eagle was getting ready to declare something, but I returned to my body and woke up before I could hear what he said. But I have come to understand since then, the lion and the eagle are, there's like a double reference. They're referencing both Great Britain and America, which, so there's a King Charles potentially tie there, and as well as the four faces of the cherubim from Ezekiel 10 and Revelation 4, okay? So this is just kind of a picture of that what I saw the two coins coming together with the V in the middle. So ever since I had this experience, this V I've been, and again, remember that's been seven years now I've been looking for and paying attention to this V and I was looking for the V Lord, show me the V, right? So I'm just referencing back here. This is um, Tom Horn's book that we already talked about with 2025 and everything, but here he goes into some detail about 
the new world order begins during a time of chaos when the earth and oceans are tottering, a time like today, among other things, this means the great seal of the United States is a prophecy hidden in plain sight by the founding fathers more than 200 years ago, right? Because we have this Illuminati thing on it. Okay, so here's what blew me away. This is kind of what um, I'm getting, what I, this has all been leading up to, but I wanted to provide the, the context to you. Like, when I saw this, why would it matter, right? So what happened is, the Lord had been teaching me about the constellations, been drawing my attention. I've been creating decks and videos um, for my group of, of folks for a couple of years. Like, you know, the things I was learning about the tribulation timeline, the signs in the heavens. <clears throat> and again, as we're watching and waiting for Revelation 12, verses 3 and 4 with the red dragon. So I came across this simulation. So I want to, I'm going to see, I might have to reshare my screen. Um, I'm going to stop sharing a second. And then I'm going to reshare um, the simulation that I have brought up because I think it'll be most interesting to you. Okay. Are you guys able to see the simulation in front yep. of you? It's a YouTube. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. So it's, it's set right now. Here's the date up here. Okay. Um, it's right now starting on February 16. So the earth, you can see the earth and the moon, the sun. So in this simulation, the earth, right, we're all rotating around the sun, but the sun is in the center. There's actually a different one that has the earth as the center, but I'm showing it like this so you can really see it. Okay, so I'm going to hit play. It goes really, really fast. Um, and I apologize when we turn the volume down. Wow, we can actually hear your volume. That's unusual. We normally can't hear the volume from the video. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. How'd you do so that? <laughs> You might need okay. to actually mute the volume on the video. It's over. It's it's louder than you are. Okay, sorry. And I don't know how to do there that. Um, and and hear you guys. Uh, no, there's a so on the video oh. next to the play button. There's oh. a little micro. There's a little speaker. You can okay. click it. There you go. Perfect. Oh, right here. Yes. Oh, yeah. you're so smart. Okay. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> okay. So I um I just kind of I'm gonna back up a minute. So I just wanted to show you that really beginning in January, and you've been watching this watchful. So the planets began to gather together in this kind of this quarter quadrant. They're coming around to mm. gather together. And so as this plays out, so I'm going to back up a little. To, I wanted to kind of hit. So there's, this is April 6th. There's April 8th. Okay. So here's the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun, right? So that's why we have a solar eclipse. Here's Mercury. Mercury's between. So if we look out, we're, we're sitting here. Let's pretend we're uh, Jerusalem looking east, right? And we're looking out. What we would see is why it looks like a bunch of planets lined up is because we are seeing it on a line, right? We can't tell that Uranus is necessarily that much further away. But you got, you're, you're, you're basically able to see Uranus and Jupiter. You will see Mercury, maybe. Um, and you're able to see Venus... Saturn, Neptune, Mars, right? So they're all kind of lined up. That was the picture that we were all kind of paying attention to. Like, it looks like they're coming together in the heavens. This is kind of crazy. And then when I watch this play out, it gets clearer and clearer. So I'm going to let this spin, and you can watch the dates click up. As Mercury comes around, and you can then see, I'll kind of get ready to, to stop. So... This is a pretty tight V. Like as I watch this, as I watch this like start to come and then I'll, I'll just let it go. You can watch they, the planets line up and then they start to unwind. So it's very momentary boom. Um, so by middle of, uh, middle of June, the alignment has ended, right? But it definitely happened. So mm -hmm. the, what was the date where they were perfectly aligned? I'll back up a little bit. So this is kind of towards the end of May. If we're mm -hmm. we'll kind of, if you go back to um, closer to the eclipse, right? We're really close to the eclipse right here. I'll just kind of play it one more time. So here we just kind of zoomed past the uh, the April eighth. Okay. <coughs> Right, right kind of when you have Venus lined up here and you have Mercury, Mars. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can almost draw, and, and I, I just, 
you know, when I saw this, I was just, my jaw just dropped. I was like, huh. wow. And then the question I was asking myself and the Lord was, how often would this happen? You know, that basically you have all the constellations almost within two, or sorry, all the planets within two constellations. Like, how often? So it hit me the other day, I should ask ChatGPT, right? <laughs> so we might as well use AI for something good. So I asked, and the first answer I got, I asked it lots of different ways. And it gave me answers anywhere from once every 19 million years to once every 32 million years to this is a rare occurrence that may never happen in your lifetime. <laughs> so I'm wow. like, uh, well, gee, so no wonder I can't figure it out. But this is... This, this is a V. I knew that when I saw it, this was a V. And so I'll go back to the... Well, let, let me ask you. I wonder um, what the planet's alignments look like around the birth of Christ. Okay, so I'm kind of glad you asked because someone else asked me. I don't have exact... And we could very easily pull it up on Stellarium. Uh -huh. I'm going to make it smaller. But someone recently asked me that, and let me see if I can, <clears throat> that was, Jan that was, so this was on January 16th of 2024. So I was like, again, every, every year on January 16th, I'm always like, okay, Lord, is this the year that the famine begins, right? So I was looking for 2024. So those planets, when you look out again, East Jerusalem East, really kind of Southeast, this is what it looked like in January. So it still looks pretty amazing the way that yeah. they're all lined up. Yeah. But someone asked me, let yeah, me find, da, 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 da. So I'm one of these little guys. I might have pulled it up in here. So no. while you look for that, can I, can I interject yeah. something? Yeah, please. So what's unique isn't the alignment per se, because it actually happens every couple of years. So if Christopher can switch to my screen, I'll show you something. Okay. My shared screen. I got it. Uh, don't go off your screen, you Rachel, because we're, we're going to come back to there. yours. No, okay, yeah, yeah, stay on. where. Yeah, stay on your screen because we're going to come back. I'm going to show. Oh. I'm going to add information that you probably don't have about this. Oh. So this was yeah, in so June fifteenth. This was June fifteenth of twenty twenty two, and the the same alignment where you have all seven planets in in uh, the same quadrant of the sky. Um, so. The but that actual quadrant, alignment. Right? Uh, well, it spans quadrant. from Taurus from Taurus from Taurus to Aquarius. So this is Aries and Pi. This is basically Pisces, Aries, and Taurus. So, the, uh, so you're referring to Pisces, Aries, and Taurus, all seven. Yeah. So, so there in this particular alignment, it started. It's starting in. Um, Pisces going through Aries into Taurus, right? Which is so the, the one you've got two years ago would be different, right? Yeah. So I, are, I wasn't referring, I was wondering if, are you referring to them all being in a line or you're specifically saying in two constellations? Yeah. So, okay. I did find what I was looking for. So I'll, I want to see what you're showing in a minute. Go back to my screen here. Okay. Um, my my point is actually irrelevant of which constellations they're in. I was going to show you something. Okay, show <laughs> so, something else. So, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so what we're looking at is, um, see the planets on her screen that are further away, like uh, you know Uranus, Neptune, Jupiter, Saturn. Those have an orbit that is really long because they're in that wider circle. So they're not in this quadrant of the sky uh, very often. The ones closer to Earth have a, a, a much faster orbit, um, so they, they tend to move around quicker. And the alignment with everything kind of showing up in this area of the sky, whether it's, you know, two, three, four uh, uh, constellations, is very rare. Um, so them being, so all the planets lining up like this, uh, while it happens every couple of years, uh, the, the full alignment like she was saying, doesn't doesn't ever happen because the uh, with with the further out planets, their orbits take so long to go around that they don't normally um, show up in this section of the uh, of the sky. Uh, was kind of my point. So, but this this here is a, a sign that happened in June fifteenth, twenty twenty two, and this 
might actually be a little off topic, but just kind of plant this seed for you. I don't know if you saw this in the video oh, you said you watched. So no, when you line up the church mentioned in the book of Revelation, they actually match the planets that we can see from Earth. Um, and the attributes of the planets actually match the attributes of the churches. So uh, Mercury, for instance, uh, is closest to the sun. That matches Ephesus. Smyrna, That's this is my favorite example because Smyrna is the church under crushing pressure. And it lines up with Venus, which is under crushing pressure. It has an atmosphere 92 times greater than the Earth's atmosphere. So that that's, holds true with all seven planets. And, and this... Uh, alignment of the planets similar to what you're pointing out is super rare uh, and then it just never happens and what you have here is when you line up the seven churches with the planets is you have uh, the three churches so two of them have nothing to repent from Smyrna and Philadelphia Ephesus are just told to return to their first love so arguably these are the best churches and then you've got the bad churches over here, which is Pergamum, Thyatira, Laodicea, and Sardis, because they all have um, things that they have got seriously wrong, whether it's doctrinal issue, worshiping Baal, uh, Jezebel, the lukewarm church, and even the dead church. And um, this was this is a potential candidate for the Revelation 12, 3, and 4 sign, because you've got three of the bad, you've got, you've got a third of the seven in the tail of Cetus. Um, so I've speculated that this could be the, the sign where the dragon draws a third of the stars of heaven and casts them to earth because you have first, second, third here. Anyway, I don't want to go off on a tangent on that. I just wanted to plant that seed. But my no, point was, that's is sometime you and is, I should is, talk about this. <laughs> Often we'll talk about for sure. But, you two knew to yeah, go down that my, rabbit hole together. Yeah, these, these planets like Saturn and um, this is Neptune and uh, Jupiter, these ones are so far out, they don't make it into this section of the sky. Same thing with Uranus. They don't make it into this section of the sky um, to form this alignment for, like she said, like 19 million years, if you actually do all the calculations and, and move it back and forward. So this is, them all being here is super rare and super yes. important. That was, yeah. that was my main point. <laughs> okay, good. We're agreed on that. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so I am gonna go back to the deck a second. So hold on, so I'm gonna share my screen again, but I'm gonna go back and share. Oh. All right, so let's see, where am I? Boom, boom, boom. Um, okay, so so we've already, so kind of going back here, so I, the angel pointed out this importance, this vision of the V, and then this economic thing, right? And the Lord's been having me study the stars, so I know that it's tied to that. So um, we've kind of reviewed already the calendar, the Zeitgeist calendar, 2025. So here we are in 2024. We see the V happening in the sky. So um, what's the conclusion, right? So... I, I want to share with you that, you know, I didn't know COVID was coming. I, the Lord didn't say, Rachel, there's going to be a, going to be a um, pandemic or a pandemic and blah, blah, blah. So didn't know. But I, in the late 2019, I did have this, this, this kind of heaviness on my heart that we were entering a season. Things were getting ready to shift. Had no idea what that would seem like. Um, I don't believe that the famine began in 2020, um, nor has it necessarily begun. Um, so... Um, what I do want to tell you is that in 2021, the way the Lord talks to me sometimes is he'll just drop questions in, in my heart. And I'm like, I don't know the answer to those. Um, and this was one of the times where he, he literally asked me, um, how long did Jacob and his 11 sons stay in Canaan before they found Joseph in Egypt? So I went, you know, that's an easy question to answer. So the scripture is, for the famine had been in the land these two years, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. So God sent me ahead of you to ensure for you a remnant on the earth and to keep you alive by great deliverance. That's what Joseph said. Um, and so I feel like that's important. So once we know there's January 16th, the famine's begun. So here's what I'll say. Again, I hate the whole date setting thing, but whatever, the Lord used a date, so it must be important. So I had a, a good close friend of mine that I trust said to me, 
a lot of times things happen and we don't realize the significance of the date until after the fact. So maybe that'll be the case. Maybe January 16th of 2024, you know, a year from now, we'll go, oh my gosh, that was hidden from us. We had no idea. But if that doesn't happen, okay, then we're assuming that, that at least I'm assuming, because the Lord, you know, the angel spoke this to me. I know it's true, because why the Lord's not going to lie. <laughs> so uh, to me, I believe it. It's okay. Everybody gets to decide for themselves. You're good. But then I'm like, okay, okay, Lord. So then would it begin in, you know, January 16th of 2025? So here we are. Now we're in February. We're going into March. We're heading for April. We're heading for the big sign in the heavens, uh, the uh, the eclipse sign over America. So how would this all tie to 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 the famine, the war, and the economic pieces? So I want to tie back to the book just briefly. Um, and I'm not trying to plug the book. I don't I make any money off the book, to be honest. Um, so it's not that at all. But Really, I the Lord put this in me in a seven-year period. He, he gave me this, and I wrote the book in two weeks. That's only the Lord. Like, it just fell out wow. of me the first, like, during, the, during the Christmas break, um, uh, end of uh, 2021. So it, was, I, it published in 2022. So it's been out for two years. So that, that, pe- that piece of famine and war and economics are all tied together, okay? And remember, I said to you, the Lord had said to me, Rachel, it's time to leave Manasseh to me. Who's Manasseh? So in the book, I lay out very clearly, I believe, a couple of things. One is that the Bible is so clear that before Jesus returns again, right, to regather us, to bring up, you know, that we meet him in the, 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 to me, I believe the scripture is the last trump. You know, we meet him in the air and we are with him. We, we have the bridal supper, right, that whole thing. Before that happens, he's actually going to regather us. So I believe in the book, I'm able to show very clearly the sequence of events that has to play out before the regathering. What I believe is that the Lord is going to use war, World War III, um, again, because the Lord spoke to me and said, World War III will begin without debate. Like he used that, that he didn't use the words without debate, but it was like, that was my impression. I, that's why I put it in parentheses. Like, because people say, oh, World War III's already started. Okay, well, um, I will tell you that um, I have a prophetic word out there where the Lord said to me very clearly, he said, Russia is going to take something that's not theirs. That is how wars get started. Wow. So that's what yeah. happened. Now, that's all glory to him. I had no idea. Um, so I, our, he's done that. The Lord had, the Lord said to me um, in this, this one was crazy. So uh just for to maybe like edify the body here is the Lord does speak. He wrote the end from the beginning. So he basically said to me on a Sunday, um, I mean, get the years right. I can't remember the year that this happened, but on a Sunday, he said an earthquake is going to go off on Saturday. He said that to me. So it's a Sunday. And he says to me, the earthquake is going to go off on Saturday. And he downloaded some things personally to me and to my heart. He, he spoke to me some things that were important to me kind of like what happened for you, Watchful. Like, he, he kind of laid out what my path was. So he, he said to me, an earthquake's going to go off on Saturday. And I thought, wow. And I, I shared the prophetic word. I've got a lot of prophetic words on Z3 News, if folks have um, never heard of that. So really, to me, a great resource, and I appreciate that avenue. And um, so I figured, well, or where do earthquakes happen? The Lord didn't tell me where, but maybe it'll be California. Maybe there'll be a big one or something. So what actually happened is Saturday morning, just like the Lord said, in Omaha, Nebraska, at 7 a.m., I woke up with my bed shaking. There was an earthquake Mm. in Omaha, Nebraska. Like, actually, it was a 5.3 that happened in Oklahoma, but we felt it in Omaha, Nebraska. So I'm just saying there's instances where the Lord has said, and so I trust him. I, he is capable to do what he said he would do. So I'm sharing that again to say the Lord has, has said, you know, World War III is, is coming. And he's told me, and I've, and I've written this, the purpose of the time we're living in is God's word says he's going to regather his people from all over the earth. There were 12 tribes, not one. And I believe the tribe of Judah is the, are the Jews, right? Judah, Jews. Judah, Jews, right? Now, the tribe of Judah, that was one tribe of 12. They were from the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom was made up of the Jews, Judah, Benjamites, and some Levites. All the other tribes were the northern kingdom. They were dispersed way before the southern kingdom. 
Where were they dispersed to? They're called the, North, the, the lost tribes, the lost tribes. What I will tell you is they're not lost to the Lord. He knows where every single one of his people are across the earth. His plan is to regather us. So he's going to use everything that is shaking to shake us loose of all the things we're tied to, Babylon and everything else. We've got to let go of this world, this place, this earth, and cling to him. We need to come back to him. We need to come back to him spiritually. And we're going to come back to him physically because we're going to be forced out of all the lands we're living in. So what's going to happen? We're in the time. We can all see it. The, the, the clock is ticking, right? The enemy is ramping up his game at the same time God has a plan. He is going to use the shaking to, we're going to let go. We're going to say, Lord, where would you have us go? There's going to be people to lead his people out of all the lands they're living in back to the place of protection, right? And we read about this. This is all a part of the Great Tribulation. It's a part of the wilderness, the people being led out into the wilderness where they're protected for three and a half years. Like that's that's what's coming. That's what's ahead. That's the purpose of all this. So there will be famine. There will be war. And But that's not the destiny of all of God's people, the remnant of God's people. So we all get a, a choice. You know, well, God knows his people. And he loves all, he loves the earth. And, and, you know, the Lord, it's true. Jesus came to, to save the world. The world has a choice to make. Are we going to follow Jesus as our savior or not? He, he is speaking and he is, is pursuing every single one of his children across the earth. He is pursuing them. He cannot wait to embrace us. I see it all around me in, in the people that I love. They're lost yet. He's pursuing after their hearts. So that's what he's doing. He's going to bring us back into himself so that we are safe. We are protected, provided for during the time that's ahead of us. So yeah, yeah you want to, you want to hear something interesting? Coming. Yeah. So some, something <laughs> yeah. that we've, something that I've been saying is uh, with this April 8th eclipse that's coming up. So I've been looking for the 1,260 days for when the two witnesses uh, are, are prophesying for 1,260 days. And it was a channel, I think it was called the Lighted Way Ministry or something like that, where that she had she had found a, a, a pattern that actually fit that. And it's April 28th, 2024 to October 10th, 2027. And those are significant because October 28th is the Festival of First Fruits on the current Hebrew calendar. And then... October 10th, 2027 is the Day of Atonement. And if you put those dates into a calculator, it's 1,260 days. Whether those are the actual dates of when it starts, if those are the actual festivals. So this is where I, I'm like, I don't Calendars. know if the calendar is correct because it could literally be that, that, the, that you know, maybe the Festival of First Fruits is April 8th and we just have our calendar all wrong. Uh, uh, I think Mark Biltz made a really good point, though, that April eighth is most likely the first of the year and and he has some pretty good logic on with the eclipse uh for why that would be so it could it stands a reason it could be april 28th anyway it's entirely possible that that and that this would be amazing god works with our current calendar uh on things i mean because he set right. all this up from the very yeah. beginning and he may he may have accounted for us messing up the calendars uh, right. But anyway, so there's a period of time of 1,260 days, and the reason our channel is called Two Witnesses Live is not because we're making the claim that we're the two witnesses. We are not making that claim. Uh, we started this channel because we know the two witnesses are going to receive their power and authority and start their ministry, and we wanted to be there to to um, bring that to people. and you know, Yeah, bring it to them basically as, as news as a news channel to actually cover the, the, the days of prophecy of the 1,260 days of the two witnesses. But here's the thing, Romans, or not Romans, Revelation, I can't remember where it is. Is it nine? Anyway, uh, it's, a, it's either, it's 11.4, I think, Revelation 11.4. Um, the two witnesses are called the two olive trees and the two candlesticks. Uh, candlesticks. If you if you um, look at 
how the book of Revelation defines candlestick, they're churches, they're groups of people. So one of we're speculating that the two witnesses could be two groups of people, whether it's Manasseh and Ephraim, whether it's Smyrna and Philadelphia, the church, two churches that have nothing to repent from, whether it's Jew and Gentile. We don't know exactly what that is, but there's a lot of patterns of groups that, that fall into two. And it lines up with what you're saying to where it looks like we're coming into that period of time where we're very likely looking at the 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 start of those days of prophecy, 1,260 days. Could be the 144,000. You know, there's an argument to be made that the 144,000 have been sealed for the last three and a half years, and they're getting ready to go to, to receive power and authority to operate their ministry because it's a pattern of 12. And Jesus picked 12 disciples when he started his ministry. 12 is organizational, or no, it's governmental perfection. So, you know, there's an argument to be made that it could be the 144,000 divided into two groups of 77,000. Uh, anyway, what, whatever, whatever is coming, um, it looks like what you're saying as far as what's going to happen and what we're actually seeing are in alignment and agreement. Oh, praise God. It's all his glory if that's true. So, Christopher, yeah. you asked a question about like what it looked like at Jesus' time. I don't have that pulled up, but someone had asked me about the major earthquake that happened. You know, at, that really was the 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 fall of that whole region. So it was on um, April eighteenth, seventy nine A.D. So that was when Mount Vesuvius erupted. So and I just what so I'm just letting you know, like the one thing I did have pull up was this. What I found was the planets all are in a, are lined up, okay, like they are in twenty twenty four. It's a different part of the sky a little bit. So, mm -hmm. sun and moon are in Taurus versus Pisces, but all the planets are lined up like in 2024, but spread across four constellations instead of just three. So, that is interesting hmm. that we're seeing uh, something similar. It, it's rare. It's super rare. It's, it's, it's really fascinating. And so many people are having these very similar dreams and visions. I mean, so many people. We have a, a close friend of ours. His name's Joel. And he has a lot of prophetic dreams. And he's had some dreams that line up with yours. He had a dream a week ago where he saw a foreign military walking down the streets of our country and he described their uniforms being blue. And he didn't say it was the UN, but that's the colors of the UN. Right. Yeah. Well, and it says in yeah. Acts 2.17 that in the last days, uh, the Spirit will be poured out and people will, will see dreams and visions. It, it's, it's clearly happening. because I'm in the last days! <laughs> even folks in the, the chat... Uh, who have prophetic dreams or are commenting about a lot of similarities. And I know that for folks that are not believers, the idea of the last days is terrifying. But for me, it's so exciting. Um, it's a wonderful time oh, to yeah. be alive. And for those who are new to the channel, just understand that salvation, it really is truly a, f a free gift. It's available for everybody. And regardless of all the organized religions and all the stipulations that they attach to this free gift, it's much more simple than that. Christ just wants an intimate relationship with you. That's it. Once you have that relationship with Christ, you will naturally walk in a way that will totally make sense. It, but the, so many people overcomplicate it, and the churches and the organized religion, they overcomplicate this process so much that folks get discouraged and even get confused about how to go about it. There is really nothing to it. You just simply believe and have that relationship with Christ, and everything else will naturally fall into place. It's that simple. I can't press that topic and the simplicity of it. it any more than that. It just, it is really that simple. If you focus on a relationship with him, make him the center point of your life so that you literally follow 
him everywhere. It's not an inconvenience. I promise you that. It actually gives a lot more excitement and joy in your life. And you will actually fulfill your true life's purpose to the max because everybody that's born into this world has the ability to live to their fullest. And to do that, it's always through walking in, you know, behind Christ in his shoes. Everything is designed for you to be the utmost successful with everything in family and your business and everything when you make Christ the center point of your life. Not sure if that, um, that made sense, but that's yeah, um, it makes sense. Well but it's that simple, guys. If you're new here, just understand how simple it really is. And I know I say that a lot, but the organized religions, they are so notoriously known for overcomplicating this and making it very legalistic. And you got to do this. you got to pay this much. You have to say however many Hail Marys and it's blah, 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 blah. All I hear is, you know, the Charlie Brown voice of the teacher wah, talking. Wah, 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 wah. It, yeah. it, it, it is, though. It's It's so simple. It is so simple. All of the things that you worry about will naturally dissipate over time just by allowing Christ to be a part of your life. It, it's, right. really that, it, it's really that simple. And folks that... The two, the two churches with nothing to repent from are the ones who love God despite the crushing pressure, meaning that they, they know they're walking into potential death and they still love God and, and speak for Him regardless of that. And the church that, that loves their neighbors regardless of how much they know, um, because it says they're, they're of little strength. So, it, it, it literally all boils down to love God and love your neighbor. You know, filter everything through that. It really is that simple. It, it, yep. it, it, it truly is. What Jesus said, love the Lord yep. your God with all your heart, and love others as yourself. Amen. If some folks are struggling to have that intimate relationship with Christ, sometimes it's because only one day a week do you allow yourself to be a part of his life. You know, and you see that a lot with folks that go to church on Sunday, and I'm not dissing Sunday by any means, but that time period on Sunday morning is the only time that they connect with God. And then the rest of the week, they're focused on life and, you know, watching TV, hanging out with friends. And not to say that any doing that stuff is bad, but you want to have them as a part of your life every day, all day. And you'll be able to enjoy all those other things. It, it just happens naturally. Matter of fact, it just magnifies your enjoyment through life. Because he simply just wants to have that relationship with you. And the more that you focus on your personal relationship, the more things will start to fall into place and line up. And it will just, it's amazing to watch it unfold, to see the things in life that are provided to you because you do that. It, it makes so much sense once you've made those steps. And you'll see relationships improve. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to explain into words, but it's all about that personal relationship with Christ. That's it. It's as simple as that. Because once you have that personal relationship with Christ, everything else is covered under that umbrella. You know, of course you're believing and you end up repenting and, you know, there's several things that you avoid doing naturally. So it's, I just find it fascinating. I know I went off on a tangent, but I try to keep it. No, simple. it's good. That's the gospel. That's like the most important thing. All this is just good information. If you don't have that, you don't have what matters most. Well, I, I often feel that the concept of being a follower of the way is overcomplicated by organized religion. And mm -hmm. it, 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 it puts a barrier mentally with folks that are trying to understand this. So I really try to drive home the simplicity factor of 
being a follower of the way. It's really as simple as I say. It's 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 really that simple. And you'll find that it all naturally falls into place if you simply just focus on your relationship with Christ. Everything else naturally will happen. Everything. I know that yep. sounds too easy to be true, but it is that easy. And it is, it's just the reality of it. I mean, I'm a walking example. I mean, it's, you know, it's, I, I had a very interesting upbringing. I had wonderful parents, but there was a time period where uh, I went off on my own, played in a heavy metal band, toured in, you know, rock star lifestyle. And it would appear that I had everything that I needed in life, but I didn't have him in my life so that there was always a missing element to the puzzle inside of me. There was a void that wasn't filled that you couldn't fill with anything. A lot of people will try to fill that void with buying material objects or this and that and this and that. Some people use alcohol. Some people use drugs. Some people just like to shop at the mall. And not to say that shopping at the mall or or materialistic stuff is bad, but a lot of folks will use that as a way to try to fill that empty void that they can't understand why it's empty. And yeah. if, and if that's you and you don't understand it, it's all about Christ and you'll you'll be completely complete if you take that step. It takes time. <laughs> when you said that or- our viewer count was three, 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 which three is completely, completely, complete. And, and the, yeah, so it was like completely, 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 complete. Right wow. at the same time you said completely complete. Weird. That's just the way God works, man. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the manifestations of the spirit are magnifying every day. The veil, the veil is literally thinning between the spirit world and our physical world. Even for folks that are not believers, because of the times that we are in, that veil is thinning. And I think a lot of the stuff that we're seeing reported on the news about possible alien sightings and stuff like that is the veil thinning. And people are seeing this crossover. And there's going to be more of it, you know, just like in the days of Noah. There's going to be more of this. It's going to get more intense. And a lot of people are going to live in fear because they'll have, you know, they'll be fearful of the unknown and things to come because they don't have that relationship with Christ where they don't understand what's happening. Whereas once you do, you know what the end game is. You know how it's supposed to play out. So if anybody that is new in the chat or doesn't understand the simplicity of what I'm saying, uh, you're always welcome to reach out to us privately our email all our contact information is is in the description our website has our phone number we have no problem chatting dr greener loves to call people and help them navigate this path if it seems more complicated for you so please just understand that that's why we're here our our sole mission is to grow the the body of Christ. And that's why we have so many guests on because it's about, you know, uh, just a community built in Christ so we can all learn together. It's a, you know, it's a giant puzzle we're putting together. And every time we have someone on, especially you, Rachel, it's just another piece to the puzzle that's been added. And, you know, I'm sure we'll have you back on because this has been a really, really great conversation. And, you and Watchful will, uh, you guys need to talk off camera sometime Make as well. Out on and, stars. Yes, mm-hmm. for sure. Because I really think that if you two were able to just, you know, share your screens together and brainstorm, that you guys will have some very interesting revelations based off of your both your guys' research. So I, I'm really happy that you came on, Rachel. Yeah. Did you have anything you wanted to shout out? Rachel, you. It, it, well, you, you uh, got your book. Your book's on Amazon, right? Make sure we have a have link a for that. Page. Make sure you have a link yeah, for we have, that. I think, so we we can... have it all, I think we have okay. it all in the description already. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, yeah. 
Yep, and love, yeah, appreciate, you know, everyone sharing this. I think this, it's a, it actually, it's amazing when everybody shares, get the word out to people about what's happening. Um, I think, you know, I think you said it really well, Christopher, and I just, the, the, the reality is we have a God who loves us so much, and he has a plan, and we just need to seek, you know, in his, be in his word. Yes, the experiences I have had are incredible, and I'm so thankful um, but his word is available every day. And my Absolutely. every day doesn't look supernatural. My every day looks like reading his word and asking them for understanding and letting Holy Spirit, who's the great teacher, teach. You know, and everyone has uh, um, a Bible that you can get your hands on, <laughs> in our country at mm -hmm. least, still. So yeah. praise the Lord, you know, just so be in the word and, and let his word speak to your heart. And, um, you know, we'll, we're going to walk this out together. And we're in exciting times. So there literally is no other generation that has, right. you know, to get to live at a time like this and see Jesus move on the earth the way he's getting ready to move. So we're the For lucky sure. ones, we're the blessed ones. If you're on Facebook, Rachel, uh, come to our page there. We have a, a really fun community. We're building uh, a, an ecosystem right now where all of this interaction will be done on our website. Um, Watchful has been working around the clock on this, so it's not ready as far as that type of setup. But we have a really fun community on our Facebook page where uh, there's a lot of inner, you know, comments and feedback and everybody sharing ideas and stuff that I watch during the day. I post those videos there because uh, I watch probably one or two NDE videos a day. Okay, and Kip is yelling in the, Kip is yelling in oh, the chat. We yeah. have to ask you about your shoes. Your healing, Your healing shoes. shoes. Oh my goodness. Oh, thank you, Kip. You're so sweet. Um, <laughs> all right. So I told you guys that, so I'm an engineer by background. And so worked with manufacturing plants and that kind of thing. Um, a number of years, maybe five years ago, my best friend had a vision from the Lord that um, where the Lord showed her a pair of sandals and a little vial of oil. And he said to her, it's time to make your shoes. And so she knew what that meant. Mm -hmm. So five years later, we now have a patent on an essential oil delivery system and footwear. Wow. And we're launching hmm. our sandal um, in the next couple of months. So it's oh, Tholy Oils. Tholy, I better say it right. Tholyoil.com is our website. Tholyoil.com. Um, and then uh, get.tholyshoes. If anybody wants to kind of pre, we're crowdfunding to be able to, to pay for the building and everything of this sandal. But I'll tell you the, right. the heart of it. I never tried to get into essential oils or any of that kind of stuff. But here's what God's doing is his heart is that his people would be healed and that they would be able to make it through all the things that are coming. We've already seen the last thing they released and all that, all the toxins, the food and everything. And so what plant extracts I mean, essential oils are just plant extracts. Absolutely. So they have incredible properties that when they go into your body, your feet are the best place on your body to absorb oil. Who knew? Besides the Lord. It's true. So the oil goes up in your body and it heals the cells of your body. That's what we believe the design intent of it is, that that God wants to bring healing and protection. He's, he told us, he's like, put on your armor. These sandals are meant to be armor. They're wow. called sandals mm -hmm. of peace. So that's, sure. thank you so much, Kim, cool. for asking Share that on our Facebook page, and I'll make sure that okay. folks have access to it. My wife's big into the essential oils, too. Yeah, mine, too. And the link's in the description awesome. already. Oh, good job. Yay. <laughs> um, thanks so much. Yeah, for, the, for, for those in the what chat, for, for those in the chat that are not uh, on our Facebook page, please make sure you guys join. Uh, our ecosystem on the website will be done at some point. But we have a lot of interaction there on our Facebook page. I know most people are not a fan of Facebook, and neither am I. But yeah. it's it's so where people come. Most people don't know. So most people don't know. I have a long career of building social networks. Um, they're not easy. It, th there are some turnkey things, but when you're talking about doing it at scale, there you have to do it right. So it's going to take a little bit of time for us to do it right. But you got a good man working on it. Yeah, and I totally trust Watchful's judgment. If he says, hey, look, it's not ready, I'm still working on it, that's his specialty. That's that's what he does, and it's, you know, it's when it's ready, it we'll move it there, and I'll stop posting on Facebook, and I'll start, you know, essentially once it's ready, 
all the other interaction on Twitter and Facebook, it will stop with me. So everybody can come to guys, our. I'm sorry, I'm looking you up on Facebook right now. So is it Two Witnesses Live? Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yay! Oh, I see you. Okay, I'm. I'm liking you. Cool. Yeah, and I'm following. Right. Boom. If right. if you awesome. if you make a post there. If it allows you to, I can make sure that it's uh, put on the page. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But at some point, Rachel, the, the idea is because, you know, the enemy is stepping up their censorship. It's, yeah. it's becoming evidently clear that they want to silence the truth. So uh, our intention is Watchville's building our private ecosystem. Right now, it's... You're able to really get in there and see whatever you want without having to register and all that stuff. But at some point, we're going to lock the door. And to get into our ecosystem, you'll have to register. Even if it's free, you're still going to have to register to get through the front door. You have to register yeah. or log in. Because we want to keep right. the censorship out of our business. We want to talk about the truth and spread the gospel of Christ without persecution and being targeted. And that's the direction things are going, guys. So right now, we're still good to be able to talk publicly about all this stuff. But it's going to get to a point where we will have to do this behind closed doors. So that's why I plant the seed every night. Make sure you're registered on our website. Um, we don't know when they're going to start locking down stuff or deleting accounts for talking about this stuff. But we want to make sure that we have everybody with us when we do make the switch. So that's why I harp on it. All right. Well, Rachel, it was so great having you. And um, yeah, you. if you're open to it, we'd love to have you back another time. Okay. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You guys have a great night. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. Take care. Shalom, shalom. I really like her. Yeah. Yeah, and I know a lot of people, here's the thing, a lot of people are kind of freaked out by dreams and visions and talking to angels and stuff like that. Not me. The, the, yeah, obviously not you. <laughs> uh, the Bible, Acts, Acts 2.17, it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So this is actually a sign that we're in the end times. Uh, so this is why we consider this stuff. You know, we don't we, we don't mock. We don't you know you know ah, you're possessed with an evil spirit. You know, uh, you can see her fruit. Obviously, she's not possessed with an evil spirit. So uh, I know there are some people that have an issue. Uh, you know, like with a, that comment about taking what she's saying with a grain of salt. Um, you should read your Bible a little bit more because this is actually a sign of the end times. And yeah, there's definitely false prophets. The scripture does say that, that there will be false, false prophets during that time. But he also says he's going to pour out his spirit. Uh, so you should, we should, we should listen and consider these things. Uh, and, no, you know, more often than not, more often than not, I find that when uh, I get over my ego and consider that I might not know everything, uh, I tend to realize, uh, I tend to learn. Uh, it's usually when I'm egotistical and be like, I know everything. This is, you know, she's she's wrong. She, you know, it's like you're just closing off, listening to God. I mean, He's literally pouring out His Spirit. Uh, you should be seeing. It's the expectation is to see a lot of this. Yeah, I used to be skeptical of stuff like that, and it's funny how God works because I've had this desire to really understand um, the topic of what she's talking about. And yeah. what's really interesting is the small details all being consistent with the true, the people that are being truthful and not just looking for attention. It's all in those small details. It's not the obvious stuff. It, it's, it's stuff that folks that really get into understanding and paying attention to these NDEs or visions or out-of-body experiences. It's these very small details, and there's hundreds of these small details but when they're consistent, it really makes a massive difference. And especially if you've heard the same story from someone else. Like everything mm -hmm. that she was saying, Watchful, I've heard other people talk about this. So yeah. it's, it's really incredible. It's, it truly is 
um, supernatural. But in a way, that's just how God works. There's many, many, many cases in the Bible where folks had visitations from angels and spoke with the Lord. I can I could rattle off 50 different verses where, you know, whether it was Abraham or it was Mary or or whoever, where they had ex- these exact uh, events happen with them. Well, and I'll give you an example. Just in the last day, uh, you know, I listened to her, uh, I, you know, in preparation for her coming on, I listened to some of her videos, and she had mentioned that thing with the V, with the planets. And my ego was being skeptical. Oh, that's not what he was referring to. She must have been, she must be misunderstanding that. And it's interesting because as I was sitting here just listening to her, I realized what she was pointing out is that uh, the unique, and that's why I piped in, is that. Um, she actually has a valid point, and that could very well have been a V that that um, he was. The, I can't remember if it was a vision or an angel that had told her uh, about that V. Oh, she said it was a V. She saw a vision of the V with the the two coins. Uh, but uh, when when I saw what she was presenting, I realized that the orbits of the planets. She's she's absolutely correct. That V doesn't happen. Uh, that V with the way it was lining up is actually very rare. And, but, you know, if I had just stuck to my ego and be like, ah, she's wrong, I can't be right, I would have never seen that. And then I would have never been able to interject and actually shown that, you know what, based on what she's showing with those orbits, that it's very valid what she's saying. Hmm. I think there's yeah. more to it than to that, too. I think there's a lot of depth with um, all the planets being on in, in that particular location. I mean, it's, it literally is pointing to particular days. That's, I mean, like that's... Genesis one fourteen. Sign seasons, days and years. So that's why I was saying you guys need to be talking. Yeah. (laughs) No, seriously, that's why I was like, you guys need to talk offline and really brainstorm because you two, through just you know going back and forth and not being you know mindful that you're on live air, could really just open up with each other and come across Mm. some revelations on things that could be um, a massive piece of a puzzle that we've been missing. So. I'm hoping that you guys talk further. And I'm sorry, guys, we didn't do any scripture reading or go over the news. Uh, I was excited to hear what she had to say just because I love this type of stuff. And I, I hope those that, you know, were somewhat skeptical about the things that she's talking about, it watched some of the uh, NDEs online. If, if folks are interested in a list of NDEs that I have screened really well, I could provide probably 25 of um, some of these that oh, I yeah. know are really good we, and have been, go ahead. I need to get some of your playlists cause we can put those on the website so that people have a one location they can go to and see the playlist of your NDEs. Yeah. My two we're get, favorite. We're getting ready to, pu- we're getting ready to publish the app. So that'll make it even easier to, to watch them. Oh, I'm so excited for that guys. He's almost done with the app. Actually, I think he is done. He's trying to get it into the app store. Um, yeah, now I'm and he's, now I'm going through the politics of getting stuck getting apps in the app store. Um, but my two favorite channels for the NDEs is Deep Believer and Randy K. Those two channels, both of the channel operators, uh, their fruit is good. They screen their guest uh, pretty severely, and I haven't had a red flag go off with either one of their videos on their channels. Now, there's a lot of other channels that leave me scratching my head um, because things don't line up, you know, um, sort of like we had an NDE person come on our show a month or two ago and, you know, it, he may have had an NDE, but the message he was pushing was suspicious to me and Watchful and I believe that he may have been deceived in his NDE and there's a lot of cases like that. I've, I've seen Watchful, I've seen more than one I've seen several that had a very similar story as his, and I truly believe that's what it is. They are deceived in their NDE or out-of-body experience because, you know, the enemy can come as an angel of light, and he is very sure. deceptive, very deceptive, very yes, he is. deceptive. And it would benefit him greatly if he sent someone back with a message that was not consistent with the gospel just to get people to sign up for a false doctrine. Yeah. Anyways, it was wonderful having everybody. Tomorrow night we have Brenda Weltner. Is that how you say her last name? Yep. 
she's going to talk about uh, multiple raptures. Mm. So this this is something that also fascinates me because she has a lot of data and scripture to um, to really tie into her message. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for being here. And we will see you guys tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Shalom, shalom. shalom. <laughs>